What's up? Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Broly, the Scion of Legend, Part 5. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Drop your weapons, Kana shouted at the soldiers in the castle. They were initially just staring at Broly in shock, but her shout had woken them up. They didn't realize that they were gripping their weapons tightly like their life depended on it, even though they knew it would be meaningless against that devil. After being shouted at, they immediately dropped their weapons and kneeled down. Science broke in afterward and either knocked them out or tied them up, while Broly was calmly walking towards the center main building. Without stopping, the door opened by itself, and he stepped inside in what seemed to be an empty throne hall. The hall was decorated with vibrant golden and green colored flags. The windows and pillars on the side were perfectly symmetric as it led to a throne on a risen platform at the very end. Behind the throne on the wall was a giant green-scaled western dragon spewing fire painted. Of course, Broly wasn't here to admire the luxury throne hall, but the figure that sat on said throne. A male elf looking like he was way past his prime. One could see the remaining handsome features he once had, but even this was overshadowed by the sickly pale skin. His hair was ashen white, but all this couldn't hide the sharp and hatred-filled eyes as he was staring at the entering figure with golden hair. How dare you to enter this cough? These divine halls are not meant for you people. Cough. Cough. The native's king was coughing heavily. Even blood appeared in his hand. This man was already one foot in his grave, but he was still able to retrain strength that was on par with most in the elite squad. This was truly fascinating for Broly. If this king was in his prime, maybe he would give Broly a good spar. As Broly thought about it, he started grinning. Bring me a fruit of might, Broly shouted. His voice echoed in the hall and was easily perceived outside as well. Broly walked through the hall until he reached the stairs leading towards the throne, but he didn't stop. He calmly walked up the stairs one by one. The elf king was already fuming with rage, but he still didn't move. Broly only stopped after he was standing right in front of him. Broly looked down at the sitting elf with a smile on his face. They were just staring at each other, one with an enraged expression while the other was smiling, seemingly happily, at him. A short moment later, a scion came inside with a small box in his hand. My liege, King Broly, the fruit you have requested, the elf king was almost exploding as he saw another of them walk up to his throne nonchalantly. Thanks, you can leave. Broly took the fruit out of the box and held it in front of the elf, obviously offering it to him. The elf took in the scent from the fruit right in front of his face. He could feel the vibrant energy inside and knew that this was a true treasure. The elf started at Broly before quickly trying to grab the fruit, but before he reached it Broly let it fall on the ground. Oops, I didn't mean to. Broly said but showed no indication of picking it up. The elf didn't say anything as he knew that in his form right now, he would stand no chance against him. But as soon as he ate the fruit his chances would rise exponentially. He quickly picked up the fruit and devoured it in top speed. The elf could feel that the decay that was destroying his body was being killed off by the energy inside the fruit. But this was all it could do. He now needed time to recuperate. He looked at the invader and saw how he raised his arms and opened his palm over his head. Small pill-like objects rained on top of his face and head. He realized what that person was dropping on him like it was trash. He had never suffered such a humiliation in his life before. He was infuriated but instead of lashing out he quickly gathered the healing capsules and swallowed them whole. If only the thought to make this alien regret his actions. A moment later his body was being drenched in energy. His hair was slowly being filled with a healthy brown and his skin got color again as well. He looked like his time has been reversed and he was back to be his once powerful prime. His body was 100x times as strong as he was just a moment ago. He felt like he could crush everyone with a wave of his hand and this included that alien. You fool. Shouldn't have done that. Now prepare to die a painful death. The elf leaked tremendous energy as it made the ground tremble and lightning appear. The throne hall was just moment away from collapsing on them. 
cracks appeared on the ground and pillars. The windows shattered under the pressure and everyone outside felt the sudden change. The elf's voice echoed through the valley. The elves seemed to have regained hope as their eyes lit up. The elf king instantly struck out with his fist and landed straight at Broly's face. The impact created a shockwave that directly destroyed the pillars and made the building collapse. The elf smirked as he tried to retract his fist, only to find out he couldn't. The dust slowly settled and a golden glowing figure smiling and staring daggers at him, while clutching his wrists with one hand. No, it was you who shouldn't have given that order. Broly stabbed out with his fingertips directly into the waist of the elf. Ark, how, how is this possible dash? Before he could say anything else Broly picked him up still with his fingers pierced inside the elf's waist. He threw him in the air and punched out. The elf shot directly through the back wall. Without hesitation the elf, once regaining his balance, tried to flee through the hole in the cave ceiling. He didn't care about the others, he had to survive. He was the only one able to stand up against that monster. He would come back at a later time. That's what he told himself, but would Broly let him escape this easily? Obviously, the answer was no. Broly walked out of the debris and started levitating. He saw how the color was drained of the other elves as they saw their king, their last hope, running away with his tail between his legs. Broly suddenly vanished from the spot and appeared right in front of the Elf King. The Elf hadn't time to dodge, resulting in him bumping into Broly. He slowly looked up in disbelief as he looked at the still smiling devil. The Elf abruptly broke out into hysterical laughter as he slowly lost in altitude. He completely lost it, huh? I shouldn't have expected anything else from such a weak-willed person like you. You should have prioritized getting into safety instead of trying to rob us. Sigh. Seems like I won't get my spar. Broly then grabbed him by the throat and flew back to the castle. He hovered above the collapsed throne room and looked around at the crowd that had gathered in front of him. Aze, Taro, Aaliyah, Kana, Jain and Daz had already gathered the other scions and their captives just in front or inside the castle. Zongya leaned against a wall of a building, spectating the scene. You aboriginals of this planet, you have attacked, robbed, and killed us after we have landed on this planet. We showed you no hostility, but you still attacked us for no reason, but, but I am a generous king. I have already executed the ones responsible for killing our man. There is only one left. Your king, Broly shouted out. His voice boomed through the streets of the castle as it reached everyone clearly. They saw their king like he used to be in his prime, they didn't know how that was possible. But they couldn't be happy about it, as he still was held like a chicken prepared for his killing. Please have. Mercy Dash, the Elf King Whisper shouted as he couldn't raise his voice by much because of the hand clutching his throat. Broly looked at the Elf in his hands and smirked at him. He threw him into the air and waved his other hand. Eraser Cannon. A green key sphere shot out of his palm and followed the falling Elf. The Elf was picked up by it and dragged into the sky. The Elf was screaming but was hardly defending against it. Either he wasn't trying or just wasn't capable of it. Either way his voice was soon covered by a deafening explosion. This devastating explosion covered the sky and bombed open the ceiling. It completely incinerated the elf king into particles. The elves on the ground were deathly pale as they looked at the place where their former king exploded a moment ago. They had completely lost hope and could only think about the same thing. This is the end. Broly stood in front of the frightened elves and looked around. Aze landed beside him and reported about the subjugation's results. On the Scion side except for some minor injuries, they had no losses. Most of the elves were captured. There had been a few that used some suicide techniques but beside that, no one was killed. Although many of the captured elves had numerous broken bones or were severely beaten up, they weren't life-threatened. Aze also reported of the ones that seemed to have some position in the army. Broly waved Jine and Daz over and asked if their captives could be housed somewhere. They discussed it for a short moment and it was quickly decided that the civilians, mainly women and children, will be staying in this valley. As of right now, they didn't have enough place in their base to accommodate them all. The soldiers would be brought back and would help the Scions set up the base. With this, they could also threaten the soldiers to obey, since their wives and children were stationed here monitored by Scions. Even if by any means were able to capture the Scion base, those civilians, the families of the soldiers, would be a good pressure point. Broly stationed a few squads that had often worked with Aze and Taro here to watch them. Taro and Aze would be placed here as well and would prevent the other Scions from doing something stupid. Broly didn't think that the Scions responsible for overwatching the civilians would just start raping the elves. 
since Scions were mostly interested in battle, but he couldn't neglect that possibility. Broly also thought it was more likely that a fight would start and get out of hand, destroying the buildings that they needed right now. To prevent this, the two were here to resolve any kind of trouble and report it to him if necessary. He ordered them to separate the two groups that would stay here and those that would come back with them. While they were being separated, Aaliyah arrived and told them that they found several food storages with plenty of food. Of course, this would still be too less because of the increased number of people, especially considering that Scions were eating like black holes. They even had big fields for crops that were supported with magic lights to simulate sunlight, making it possible for them to grow underground. Broly told Aes to gather those that seemed to be holding some power in this elvish city. A few dozens were quickly gathered in a side building and were left standing. There was only one chair in the room. Broly calmly walked past them as they hastily opened a path for him. He sat down on the chair watching their uneasy faces. You are going to work for me. Broly's icy voice sounded out. It made the elves shiver. Only one seemed to be barely affected. He looked like a battle-hardened warrior with the numerous scars as well his standing position that would allow him to react to attacks quickly. Broly pointed at him. Speak your mind. You think I will offer you anything after everything you have done to my people? I will never help you. Although he sounded fierce and determined, Broly still was able to hear some slight tremble in his voice. Broly rolled his eyes. My people may have broken your bones and ravaged your houses, but you are still alive, are you not? Besides you guys should really consider the whole situation, since this doesn't involve only you. I want you to know that if what you can offer is not worth the effort of keeping you alive then, I think you know what would happen. You see, we just want you to give us some taxes in form of food or water supplies. You build a house here and there, but besides that you get to live a normal life. But if you don't comply, we science can get really nasty. How about this, one of you can stay behind gather a few people you need as guards to make sure they won't get hurt by our people and motivate the civilians to make some farming. We don't really have a choice now, do we? I, Gren, will do my best to serve you. The same one spoke out while gritting his teeth. Broly had hoped that he would do so as he was the strongest of the group here and maybe in the top three in total. He looked like someone that other elves depend on and had some status, considering that the others weren't as chatty as him. This was perfect as it would give them a false sense of security if he stays here and help his people by protecting them. The other elves seemed to have accepted their fates as well and seemed more cooperative in the future. Broly waved his hands and signaled them out. Seems like those elves aren't stupid. Elves? Your Majesty, they are called Grebnoch, Daz said from the side. Gebnuk? They will be called elves from here on. The elves would probably want to say something about it, but even if they dared to speak, Broly wasn't going to consider it. It would be too bothersome to remember that name. He let Jine be the middleman. She would overlook the whole process and make sure that everything went smoothly. Since she already worked for the supplies back on Perdidus, he had faith that she was able to handle the logistics. She also was a kind person. It would be easier for her to establish a good relationship with the civilians as the go-to person. Broly then gave the waiting soldiers, that would be coming with him, under direct command to several generals of the elves that were with him in the building. With the exception of a small group of twenty, which would be placed under Daz. Broly thought it would be easier for the elves to follow the orders if they come from one of theirs. It was also a way to show that they still could regain positions of power, although for now Scions were still above them in ranks. He also wanted to establish an elvish elite squad, who would carry out order and punishments for the other elves in the future. After everything was said and done, they walked out and started to sort themselves accordingly. Broly started hovering above the elves and started speaking. I am Broly, the king of all science. And now I am your king too. Work hard for me and it won't be disregarded. All soldiers are to follow us back to our base and the civilians will be staying here. I will say it once. I will not tolerate any disobedience. Broly finished and started flying out towards the science base. A while later they were a few kilometers away from their base, before Broly stopped and with a wave of his hand, he cut down a whole area of gigantic trees. Afterwards he leveled the area and then went on to expand this area. The Scions were using the hack trees to build houses and the elves directly carved out the trees, which were left standing in the area. For the elves it was their go-to methods to establish the houses inside the trees as the average tree was gigantic enough for them to live in. They had worked through the night until the sun set again. After all this time, a major area was constructed in the middle of the jungle which could house the 700 elvish soldiers and some of the scions that would be staying here. 
A few scions had complained why they had to work for their captives and establish houses for them, but were quickly shut up by others. Even their king helped. It would be disgraceful for them to complain about this menial work. Of course, Broly didn't just do this because he was such a kind person. After their show of power, the elves knew how unmatched they were. But Broly didn't need sickly scared slaves. If they didn't have houses a place they could retreat to, call it at least for now a home, it would help their mentality a bit. They would be healthier and hopefully more willing to work for him. He wanted them to believe not that they had to but that it was preferable to work for him. If that meant to build a few houses for a day and a half, he would just be done with it earlier. He stationed a few scions here that would also live here, mainly for monitoring reasons but also so that the races would interact with each other. After he was done, he went back to his ship and looked over the list Daz gave him, which listed the scions that were most adequate to handle administering work. It was mostly scions that weren't excelling in the strength department but had shown their cleverness in past missions. He had given those scions, that might be good for administering, command over the elvish generals. They would dictate the general direction and the generals would work out the details. They have started with going out of the jungle into an open area and built the houses there. The gravity rooms and other necessities were integrated as well. For now, it was only the groundwork being built with the help of a construction plan they had from Perditus. There were also some scientists that had been working for the science for several years that helped, but there were just too few. They needed some help so they could transform this base into a city that could accommodate many different races. Daz was the go-to authority in the new base if there were disputes or any decisions that had to be made. As Broly didn't want to work out the details himself, he just put most work to some other scion. It had been several weeks now since they started, and the elves started to calm down a lot. It was partly because the tasks they got weren't unreasonable, but mostly because it wasn't really a slave-master relationship with the scions, but were more like subordinates and bosses. The civilians in the valley were mostly concerned with the well-being of the soldiers, but also calmed down after the soldiers came home again on their free days. Of course, they would only have free time if they actually worked. There were few that refused to work but after not getting food or water from the scions, while their friends could eat their stomach full, they gave in. After everything seemed to calm down and stabilized, Broly prepared to leave. Since he got the techniques from Helen, he came up with an idea. There was one particular skill that would prove useful in his endeavors, but he needed something. He needed the last origin crystals, the spirit crystal. After he had absorbed one, he would be able to use the technique which would accelerate his plans for his kingdom. Of course, his strength would increase and there seemed to be a pleasant surprise that Helen didn't want a spoiler. She had put it in a separate folder for him after he absorbed the last crystal. On his spaceship in his room, he looked in the mirror with his gear on. A black green chest armor with purple pants and a green fur. Although he didn't have the same background with the fur like in the movie, he still liked the style. The door opened after he was ready. Aaliyah came in wearing a body-hugging leather armor. He enjoyed the view from head to toe. Did you get this from the elves? Yes. Isn't it neat? Aaliyah said happily. It sure is. But does their armor even provide any protection? It only looks like it. It isn't actually leather. Armor that looks like leather in space, huh? Well, I run around with fur. Broly looked down and looked at his gear, before looking at Aaliyah who was posing in front of him while looking in a mirror. After a while, Kana burst into the room with Zangya slowly following. Kana looked at Aaliyah who just had finished pulling her pants up. She looked towards Broly, who was meditating. Aaliyah, not fair. You could have waited. What? We didn't do anything. Aaliyah pretended to be confused as she tilted her head and put a finger on her chin. For hell's sake, you guys are always doing it like rabbits. And I am the one that has to wait for you to finish. Zhangya rebuked. Yeah, yeah, next time you can join. Kana answered casually. That's not what I meant. Zhangya unconsciously glanced at Broly who felt her gaze and looked back. Isn't it official already? How about you two get it on already? Kana urged them with Aaliyah smiling satisfied on the side. Aaliyah, what are smiling so shamelessly? How about you remove that stain on your pants? What? Where on my pants? I thought I sw dash. Aaliyah searched her pants only to find nothing and looked at Kana who was teasingly smiling at her and pointed at her. Aha! So you did do it. Alright enough blabbering. Let's do this. Hold your hands and I will bring us to the nearest planet that can sustain life. Broly interrupted them before it would escalate further. They did as he told while Aaliyah was mischievously smiling at Kana, who wanted to say something but was quickly keeping her mouth shut because of Broly's stare. 
after Aaliyah grabbed his hand and in an instant later the four disappeared from the spot and re-emerged hundreds of light years away, on a rather small planet. Surviving in space was a useful ability, unfortunately that wasn't a trait of science. They could use key to replace it for some time, but it wasn't as convenient as other races that were able to survive in space without effort. Fortunately for the four, Helen had left behind the most efficient techniques for vacuum breathing. The key consumption was minimal and would be easily filled up with a short meditation session. With that in mind, they could almost indefinitely survive in space if they had time to find a quiet place to meditate in. Broly decided to teleport them to a planet so they could build a temporary base for the case they are wounded and can't use teleportation for some reason. After reaching the planet, they scouted the area and found water and wildlife for food. Fortunately for them, Science and Eros had strong stomachs and could eat many different things that may have been poisonous for normal humans. But they quickly realized something. They looked up and saw a gigantic ball in the sky. It looked like a giant ice planet from up close. Broly only thought of his wallpaper that he had once. It was really magnificent, but there was a problem. This isn't a planet. This is a comet. Broly shouted out as he started to power up. A violent storm started to gather around him as his figure grew. His hair shined brightly in a green hue, and even his eyes turned yellow. In an instant, his presence crushed the surrounding ground into a crater. He slowly flew up in the air and headed towards the comet that was about to destroy this planet. A green sphere appeared around his body and was quickly gathering in his palm. He pumped a tremendous amount of energy into this attack. Gigantic eraser! Broly threw the key blast right at the comet. It was quiet for a few seconds. A bright green light suddenly illuminated and dominated the sky. A few seconds later, a shockwave appeared. The planet they were standing on was hit by the shockwave created from the massive explosion. The planet was rattled. The ground broke open, winds tore the trees out of the ground, and oceans created tsunamis. Havoc was created only because of a shockwave. The planet would have been completely destroyed by the comet, but now the comet itself was pulverized by Broly. After everything seemed to calm down, Kana approached him. Don't you think that you have overdone it? The shockwave alone almost destroyed the planet. Well, it is better to pulverize the comet than to break it up into smaller comets that would rain down on the planet. When that happens, I wouldn't be able to destroy every single one of them. All right, enough talking. Let's find a cave or something where we can retreat if necessary. Kana just held up her hands in defeat as they all went around to search for something to stay in. Of course, this little spike in energy traveled light years from Broly's location. They had teleported to a planet right in the west quadrant of the universe. This spike of energy alerted a few organizations that had huge influences in the west side of the universe. Unbeknownst to Broly, he had created unrest in this part of the universe, which would slowly spread. Afterwards, the powerhouses of the west were alerted as well and wondered who this bold newcomer was. To dare swagger around here, he seemed to have a death wish. Naturally, even if Broly knew, he wouldn't care one bit. He and his company were currently flying towards a near solar system with their body exposed to the empty space. They were using this travel as a way to train and getting used to this vacuum breathing technique. With their strength, it didn't take them long to arrive. Only a few hours they had arrived inside their destination solar system where they headed towards the planet on the boundary of this solar system. They searched for it, but even after a while they had no success. Instead of going together one by one, they spilled up and searched for the crystal, each on their own planet. After a while, they all realized that it wasn't on their planet either and gathered once again. There is only one left. The one closest to the sun. Sigh. Why couldn't it have been like before? A solitary planet floating in space. From further back, the last planet seemed like a burning dot. Now closer up it still looked uncomfortably hot with his red, almost glowing surface. Without saying anything, they flew towards it and quickly landed on the surface. Like they assumed from the look and proximity to the sun, it was burning hot. They quickly began to sweat, and the girls wanted to get off this planet before they completely drenched their clothes. They used the circulation method to locate the crystal. With their combined effort, they combed through the planet until Broly noticed a reaction. He could tell that he was getting closer, after for a minute until the reaction weakened again. It's underground again. Huh? Broly landed where the reaction was the strongest. The surroundings looked the same everywhere. The whole surface was covered with orange-brown rocks that slightly had a metallic sheen to it. Before Broly was about to dig into the ground, in the corner of his eye, he saw something red in the shadows of the rocks it was covered by. 
He didn't notice it at first as everything had a similar color. It was only that it was glowing slightly. It wasn't a sunlight reflection, but it was producing it. Without saying anything, he walked towards it and quickly cleared it from the rocks with a wave of his hand. He furrowed his eyebrows as he saw what he was greeted by. Is that a gate? Zhangya asked as she came closer. It appeared to be a solid red gate with some faded markings on it. It laid there flat on the ground. Broly stayed quite as he ran his fingers over the markings on it. He could slightly feel a connection to it, as he did back on Perdidus when he discovered that temple. He instantly understood that this was something left behind by that ancient civilization, the original owners of those origin crystals. He stopped pondering about it. He put his fingertips in the middle of the two halves of the gate as it didn't have any handles and swung the gate open. At least that was what he wanted to do. Despite exerting himself, he couldn't move it one bit. He slipped with his hands and almost fell on his butt. He took a step back and frowned. Suddenly, his key rose as his muscles expanded slightly, and his eyes turned yellow. A wild storm pushed all the loose rocks in the surroundings away as his hair turned golden. Surprisingly, the ground didn't break open under the humongous pressure he now gave off. Although the ground trembled a bit, the planet was mostly unaffected. He again approached the gate and tried to pry it open. The ground beneath his feet gave in as he put all his might in opening it. What a joke! I can shatter entire planets with my bare hands, and I can't freaking open a gate. Veins on his forehead started to bulge as he unsuccessfully exerted himself again. He stopped and straightened his back. He stretched out his hands and pointed his palm at the gate before firing a key blast. The dust slowly settled, only to reveal an unscathed gate. Yurik, damn this! Broly screamed out as he flew into the air. High up he stopped and looked down before his body gave off an even stronger more oppressive pressure as his key ravages the surface of the planet. His size grew drastically until he reached three meters of height. His hair was shining brightly green as well as his body as it was covered in flame-like key. It even overtook the sunlight as he illuminated the planet's surface. His muscles were tense as his whole body gave off a crushing aura. His eyes slowly turned from a green-bluish color to a yellow one. Everyone that would meet his gaze would feel a primal fear in them, urging them to flee as fast and far away as they possible could. It especially was affecting other scions like it was something genetically wired into them. Even Aaliyah and Kana couldn't help but shiver every time he transformed, even though they were ones that would see it more often than any other person. Oh no! Shit! Seriously? The girls panicked as they looked in the air as Broly transformed. They knew what would come next. They quickly transformed as well to withstand the pressure and quickly flew away into space. They quickly arrived way behind Broly and spectated his next move. He stretched out his arms to the side and crackling key appeared around him. All the energy around him started to gather inside both of his palms. The energy inside was being compressed into almost solid spheres. He put both his hands together and fused both spheres into one. It didn't change in size but that didn't mean it didn't rise in power. Instead the danger this small green sphere gave off was enough for people to believe that they would die no matter what. And for most this was true. Broly thrusted his arms. Gamma Ray burst. The sphere burst into a green beam of destruction as it shot at lightning speed to the gate. In an instant it arrived at the ground. The girls in the back were surprised to see this new attack, as they never saw him practice it. This attack far exceeded what they could even hope to fend off. The amount of key used in this attack was mind-boggling. Even space itself seemed to bend to its force. An absolute overkill, that is what they felt this attack was. But against all expectations it didn't immediately pierce through the planet. The energy wave at contact was blocked by the gate. The energy was being dispersed to the sides and instantly pulverized the planet as it was pushed further. The attack flowed around the gate and its underground construct. It shot through the solar system. Parts of near planets it passed were visibly destroyed, even though the attack didn't touch it directly. The beam shot into the seemingly endless universe. It lasted for a few seconds before it became thinner and finally completely faded away. Broly was exhausted as he even lost the ability to stay in his legendary state. I need to do something about the key consumption, Broly told himself. The others slowly approached him. They all speechlessly stared at the construct with the gate. Okay, well I guess it is impossible to enter it, Zhangya stated. Broly frowned he wouldn't believe that this ancient civilization first gives out the coordinates from every crystal and then make it impossible to access it. Broly threw a healing capsule in his mouth and instantly recovered some of his energy. 
These capsules were mostly created with healing in mind, so although it was able to restore energy, it was far behind the intentional effects. He flew to the door and again pondered on how to open it. He placed his hand on the door and circulated his energy according to the method, but nothing happened. He already tried it when he was trying to open it with his hands. He first thought that he would need the method and enough power to open it, but he was clearly wrong. He became annoyed and thought he would just destroy the gate. He had estimated that it would be difficult to destroy, which was why he went all out in the end, but he didn't expect for it to be unaffected. Oh man, I hoped that I would gain another ability. How about we just bring it back to our planet and try on a later time? Kana suddenly said. Another ability? Maybe. Broly took a step back while still circulating according to the technique. He closed his eyes as he focused on something. Suddenly, the door creaked as it slowly opened. It shined brightly as it revealed the lit hall with a 10 by 10 by 10 green glowing crystal hovering midair. It seemed unreal, as it seemed like it shimmered in and out of existence. It was a particular sight. It is even bigger than the Origins energy crystal. Kana exclaimed. How did you open the gate? Zongya asked Broly as she stared at the gigantic crystal. He smiled at the question. I used telekinesis. Eh? That weak ability you used to pull some pranks on us in the past? No way. Zongya was surprised, as were the others. They would have never imagined that this parlor tricks he learned from Helen would be able to open a gate which was easily able to handle his terrifying attack. Yeah. I thought I would just try to use a technique that was related to the spirit. I don't know why they did it. But this prevents everyone who doesn't know how to use his spirit to be unable to reach the crystal. The other crystals didn't have something like that. The Origins energy crystal didn't seem to be moved or even discovered until we did. And the Origins blood crystal was on a planet that was surrounded by distorted space, so maybe they didn't bother with it? Well, this doesn't matter right now. We won't come up with the right answer just by pondering about it. Let's go. Broly was the first to step inside. He looked around the hall but couldn't find anything else besides the Origins crystal. All right, like last time. Guard me while I am absorbing it. Broly went ahead cut his palm open and wanted to press it against the crystal. As soon as he was about to touch it, the crystal became blurry, seemingly moving into another plane and his hand phased through the crystal. He was a bit surprised but considering that the door only opened with telekinesis, he tried to get a hold of the crystal with telekinesis as well. Although the crystal seemed somewhat affected, he still couldn't touch it. Maybe the force I use with telekinesis is not strong enough? But why would the door open with this amount already, wouldn't it make more sense to make them need the same strength? Broly looked at the crystal as he pondered about it. Maybe you have to use your spirit since it is called Origin Spirit Crystal and all, Zongya said while leaning against the side of the open entrance. Since the others were already watching the surrounding outside, she would be waiting at the entrance in case someone managed to get past the two. An unlikely event but still possible. Although if they were able to get past two ascended super scions, they would also get past a weaker Hera. She would be only be able to delay them further. Hmm, use my spirit. Maybe something like the image training that Helen taught me? From what Helen told him, image training was to increase the strength of one's soul. If the soul was strong it would even affect the body and energy one had. That was also why Frisia increased tremendously after he died a second time, as he used this type of training in hell to increase his soul strength. Broly and Helen would link their minds and use this method to train and test out many techniques. Broly used this kind of training after that a lot, since basic strength training in the gravity chamber wasn't able to increase his strength as much as this type of meditative training would. He sat down cross-legged and closed his eyes and started imagining how he would step out of his body and move towards the crystal. He pressed his palm against the crystal, but only a second later his hand went through it again. He frowned for a second but quickly came to a realization that since it existed in both states, he would need to touch it, spiritually and physically. He again went into a meditative state. With closed eyes, he started to stand up and walk towards the crystal. He pressed his palm against and circulated according to the absorption method. He did it all in sync with his spirit and as expected, it worked. He felt how an invisible energy entered his body and flowed towards the middle of his head. Hundreds of minutes went by as he absorbed the energy. His mind became clearer with every second and his spiritually self became easier to imagine and to be felt. He felt like he expanded into every corner of his own body, it was a weird sensation, but he knew that it was bringing extraordinary results with it. After hours he opened his eyes again, which seemed to gain depth and profoundness. He examined his mind and could feel how his soul and spirit increased in strength by the second. 
even though he wasn't training right now. He had gained a lot more, but he would have enough time to explore it when he was back on. He still had to name his planet, he realized. He couldn't let his planet be unnamed, and he didn't really want to name it Broly. He stood up and quietly walked towards the entrance where Zhang Yao was standing while looking outside. He stood directly behind her and put his hand on her hip and pulled her closer. She quickly turned around while trying to push herself away. Considering the enormous strength difference, it was no surprise that she failed. She quickly realized that it was Broly who suddenly pulled her closer without saying anything. Ahem. You you done already? Could you let me go? She was putting on her cold expression, but her ears became slightly red, exposing her. Sure. Ha ha ha. Just wanted to tease you a bit. He was in a good mood now and felt like messing around a bit. He touched her nose with his own as he pulled her closer. He saw how Zhang Ya was glancing at his lips from time to time and decided it was enough teasing and put her down, preparing to leave. On a second thought, Zhang Ya pulled Broly back into the hall and closed the gate. She turned towards Broly and quickly stripped off what she wore and slowly walked towards him. You know, I used to always speak my mind. I knew what I wanted and would do anything to get it. So why is it so hard to accept it now, to take action, to speak my mind? How could I fall for someone that kidnapped me and ruthlessly woke me up from my dreams of conquering the universe? She leaned against Broly completely naked. She looked up and stared into his eyes. You know what? I am not hiding anymore. Broly make me yours. Broly was shocked at what happened. He only now realized how she would always stick around him. He didn't think about it much since she always had the same expression and wouldn't show anything beyond a slight blush, which was also why he hadn't taken actions yet. He wasn't sure if it was her reaction to the fact that their future daughter came and told them about their relationship. Now she was offering herself to him, he wouldn't get a clearer signal than that. Who was he to deny such a request from someone he liked? He picked her up and pushed her against the wall. He gave her a deep kiss and quickly stripped as well. He started to torment her for hours. What are you doing, Kana? PSHH. Aaliyah saw how Kana was looking through a small slit between the slightly open gate. Aaliyah looked through the gate as well and widened her eyes at the scene. Her face instantly became crimson red. She noticed that Kana was moving slightly and was drooling a bit. Aaliyah realized what she was doing as she looked at Kana's hand. She closed the door before she shouted at Kana. You pervert! Aaliyah slapped Kana's head. Ow! You are not allowed at the gate. Go watch the surrounding. But dash, no buts. Now go! Kana dejectedly flew away. Seeing this, Aaliyah leaned against the gate and took a few deep breaths as she was tempted to watch herself. Broly and her weren't as active as they were at the start of their relationship since there was a lot to do, which made her easier to be aroused. After a few hours Broly opened the gate and immediately saw Aaliyah who was slightly blushing and instantly understood that she knew. She hugged him and whispered something into his ears. She was looking away embarrassed. After all the time I thought you became bolder, but here you are shy as ever. Sure, we can foo dash. She covered his mouth with her hand. What if someone listens? We are in outer space who would... Never mind, Broly threw up his hands in defeat. Go absorb the crystal. You have to use your spirit and your body simultaneously to absorb it, he said before sending her in. Aaliyah glanced at Zhangya who was sleeping deeply, before going towards the crystal and getting to work. Broly told Kana telepathically to come and do the same. He saw her mischievously smile and couldn't help but sigh. What was the point of closing the gate if these two just peeked inside? Zhang Ya woke up after some time as well and they quickly had absorbed the energy inside the crystal. This time only Zhang Ya gained an ability. She was able to directly attack someone's soul. It was a frightening ability since even if someone has tremendous amount of strength, she would be able to defeat them if their soul strength was insufficient. Of course, if a being's body got stronger it would slightly affect the soul as well like the soul would affect the body. Although it was a non-lethal ability, it would prove helpful in battle. After the four were finished with absorbing the energy, the crystal shrank to a size of two meters, since Broly didn't want to come here every time he decided to take it with him to his planet. He even wanted to take the whole hall with him, but he couldn't teleport with it no matter how he exerted himself. So before leaving with the crystal, he wanted to at least study it for a bit. He activated his life force vision and he couldn't believe what he was seeing. Broly looked at the hall and its door. The whole construct was made out of tremendous amount of spiritual energy with only a bit of magic mixed inside. The energy was constantly flowing around the construct, which also explained why it wasn't destroyed or pushed backwards by his attack earlier. The flow of energy pushed the energy of his attack around itself. If a blast hit it, 
The blast would be immediately broken up and dispersed to the sides. His vision had changed again. It was similar to when he absorbed the Origin's energy crystal. He was now able to see spiritual energy. He was certainly surprised by this find, but what shocked him was not the new energy that he could now see but these flickers. There were light particles everywhere, flickering in and out of existence while being connected to each other, like a net covering all of existence. They seemed to move while not changing their position at all. He had never seen anything like this before, but he immediately knew what this net and its movement symbolizes. It was space being moved by time, time and space itself. He looked inside at the crystal again. He saw how the crystal was repelling space and time. He instantly knew that he wouldn't be able to teleport it away. By teleporting, he would need to use space to instantly travel through it. As for the construct, he wouldn't be able to move it either. He would need to far exceed the energy that was used to create this construct to teleport or even move it. Let's go. There isn't anything we can do now, he said to the others. The others nodded before teleporting away. He looked at the construct that was still moving like it was still in the planet. It seemed like the magic inside made it so it would stay synced with the now destroyed planet. Either way, it wasn't something for him to be concerned about. He closed the door and vanished from the spot. One month later, back on the Scion's new planet, Broly was hovering cross-legged in his training room. He focused on the spiritual energy inside as he moved it according to the technique he was trying to master. After he had come back, he had noticed that every technique that used mental strength were growing stronger. He now knew that it wasn't really mental strength but the power one could push out of one's soul. For now, his abilities like telepathy, telekinesis or aura was increased significantly. Although they weren't abilities that were as destructive as normal key attacks, but most races wouldn't be able to sense this energy. It would be a good method to distract one's enemies, especially the technique that Zhongya gained after she absorbed the crystal. Broly was now able to use it as well and with much greater results too. His overall soul strength far exceeded the others, so it wasn't surprising that his abilities would be stronger as well. But what will help him in the future significantly would be the technique that he had trained for almost a month and now he finally mastered it. Broly opened his eyes and slowly placed his feet on the ground. He deeply breathed in and out and started to walk outside. It was time for him to take actions before it was too late. Zongya, Kana and Aaliyah waited for him outside. Kana and Zongya smiled mischievously at him. She had taken up some naughty habits from Kana. They wanted to throw herself at him. Since it was late already, and they usually spend some quality time with each other now, but this time he stopped them. I am going out for some time. Aaliyah, you are now in charge for the time I am away. Send messages to the races from Perdidus and announce that we are going public soon. They should be aware that the sooner they come, the greater their benefits are. You are leaving? How long will you be away? Not sure yet. Maybe only a week or a few months. He gave each a kiss before heading out of his ship and towards a house near the center of the small city that was created already. Without knocking he went inside and saw how Raditz and Jine were eating their evening meal together. Are you prepared? Broly asked and the two instantly knew what he meant. Yes, I have already put one of my good friends in charge in the valley. Jine almost screamed as she shot up. Raditz nodded as he stood up as well and walked towards Broly. Broly crouched and placed his hand on the ground in the living room. Raditz and Jine placed their hand on his shoulder. One moment later the whole house disappeared from the city from this planet. On Earth, near some mountains but still not far away from the city, a house suddenly popped into existence. Obviously, this house was the building from Raditz and Jine. They walked outside and Jine shot into the air. High in the sky Jine took a deep breath. MMM. This planet looks and smells wonderful. Raditz smiled wryly on the side. Although what his mother said was true, he didn't really have too fond memories of it. He was ashamed of what he did but now he was here to reconcile with his brother. Broly flew up next to them. Remember, you W.E.R. Dash. Yes. We were able to escape from you and your kingdom by relying on Aaliyah. Raditz interrupted. Broly, thank you so much. You don't know how much this means to me. Jine turned around and said as she grasped his hands. Broly smiled. They have known each other for his entire live in this universe. He was happy that she is able to see Kakarot again. Here this is the technique on how to teleport. You are always welcome on my planet. This is all I can do for you now. If he accepts you now is in your hands alone. Don't mess it up. Broly gave them a small tablet before he teleported into space to a certain spaceship. Jine and Raditz were flying towards the ocean. 
There was a small island in the water with a singular house on it. It had pink walls with a red roof. On the front side of the house were red letters that spelled came house. They landed on the sand just in front of the front door. There was some movement inside until a few figures came outside. Some were watching out from the window. They were cautious, especially after seeing who landed outside. Raditz, how are you still alive? A small bald guy without a nose shouted out. Raditz stayed quiet as he looked at his brother. He took a deep and stepped forward. Kakarot narrowed his eyes. He was confident that he would easily be able to defeat him. But he had a strange feeling as he looked at the woman at the side, who was watching him the whole time with teary eyes. Raditz went on his knees and pressed his forehead on the sandy ground. I apologize for everything I did. I am truly and deeply sorry. I was just too arrogant and just didn't know better. The others were shocked at the display that this once arrogant scion showed them. I dash. Ahem. Stand up. I never hold a grudge against you. We fought it out and everything is now good between us. Kakarot rubbed the back of his head. Goku. How can you just forgive him? A woman with blue hair screamed out from the window. He even let that Vegeta scumbag live. So what surprise is it that he just forgives his brother? The bald midget retorted. So, who is she? Kakarot said as he pointed at Jain. Raditz stood up and smiled bitterly. She is our mother. E-H-H-H? Everyone screamed out as they heard that, except for Kakarot, as he quietly looked at Jain. My mother? As soon as Jain heard that, she walked towards him and quietly hugged him. The other looked at her with caution, but Jain just ignored them. She didn't say anything until she couldn't take it anymore. She broke out in tears as she tightly held her youngest son. Broly emerged on top of a gigantic circular spaceship that was hovering over a planet. He already knew where it would be heading soon, and it wouldn't have taken more than a week to have reached its destination. Fortunately, Broly was able to locate the key of the one he was looking for. After he had absorbed the Origin Spirit Crystal, he was able to attune himself with space. His senses were able to reach far into the galaxy and if he concentrated enough, he was able to pinpoint someone's location if that one wasn't intentionally hiding it. He looked down from the ship at the planet beneath it. Even from here, he could tell the destruction the one he was here for had caused on the planet. Without thinking about it anymore he went inside the ship and searched for the room with the monitoring. He destroyed all the records and afterwards disposed of all the cameras. After he was sure that no one had seen him, had any or weren't able to make records of him, he teleported to the planet. The sky was covered with clouds that seemed to glow orange as the setting sun shone at it. A purple being with white chest armor-like carapace was sitting on a chair while two of his subordinates were sitting on the ground, listening to the report another subordinate, a turquoise alien with short blonde hair, made to their lord. The wind was storming and howling hard, but they didn't seem to bother. What? My brother, Frisia was killed by a super scion that grew up with humans on Earth. Yes, Lord Cooler. It seems ridiculous, but it seems a scion named Sun Goku does live on planet Ir Ugg. Arg. Kadash Salza. Dor and the eyes the complete platoon. Cooler's armored squadron. Instantly fainted, seemingly without any forewarning. Cooler's eyes constricted as he saw his most powerful subordinates instantly faint. He looked out in the dusty storm as a vague figure was walking through it. Cooler stood up and his muscles tensed as he saw the tail on the figure. Could it be? He, <laughs> you really look like your brother Frisia. But you definitely are cooler. Broly grinned as he walked out of the storm displaying him wholly. Humph, <laughs> it seems you do know me. But are you? Cooler seemed calm, but inside he was getting anxious. It was clear that this scion had knocked his subordinates out without him noticing anything. He didn't get that one, did he? I am King Broly the legendary Super Scion. As I know, the Super Scion that killed Frieza is called Son Goku. Please, don't compare me to that weakling, Broly said mockingly as he watched Cooler's reaction. Weakling, Cooler unconsciously clenched his fists. How about you transform and we get this over with? He asked as he stretched out his arms as if to welcome Cooler with a hug. Since Cooler, like any other normal being, was only able to vaguely feel the oppression a strong being would exude, he could tell that Broly was strong, but as for how strong he was unsure. How do you know about my dash? Oomph, no matter what, I make sure you will regret this. Immediately after he said that, his body poured out a tremendous amount of ki. His size grew to 2.5 meters, the carapaces on his wrists gained blade-like protrusions, 
His shoulder pad-like carapace changed into hoops and four spikes extended out of his head with a large dark blue crystal-like section in the middle of his head. As a finishing touch, his mouth was covered, forming a mouth guard that seemed to be of mechanical nature. Broly looked at Cooler's transformation. He always thought that this form of Cooler looked pretty badass. Not as badass as him, though. Now prepare to die, son. Cooler disappeared and re-emerged in front of Broly's face. He punched Broly's stomach. Nothing happened. The armor on Broly wasn't even scratched. As Broly took the hit without moving, Broly grabbed Cooler's wrist and twisted it to the side, making Cooler kneel on one leg. Ah, how, how is this possible? Cooler wasn't able to get out of Broly's grasp until he saw a knee flying at his face. Without being able to react, he was sent flying into a small hill in the back. His body instantly destroyed the hill and only stopped a few tens of meters further away, leaving a trail where he slid over the ground. Cough. Cough. How I thought a super scion has golden hair. Cooler's mouth guard was shattered into pieces which pierced through his skin all over his mouth. He slowly got up and looked around but couldn't get sight of the scion. He pushed out the pieces out of his skin with his key. TCH. You think you are almighty because you are strong? Cooler shouted out and then flew into the sky. In the air, he pointed his palm upwards over his head. Only a few moments passed, and a gigantic sun was created, hovering just above his palm. You damn monkey. Let's see how you can survive without a planet. Supernova. Cooler swung his arm downwards, and the sun followed his movements. Cooler laughed as he saw the sun flying quickly to the surface of the planet. Suddenly a small green sphere flew in from the side directly into his attack. It seemed insignificant in front of his supernova, but he quickly became speechless as he saw how his attack was easily being picked and pushed into space by this small sphere. Seconds later a massive explosion covered the sky and made the whole planet tremble. That is not nice. Think about the ecosystem. A deep voice sounded out directly behind Cooler, sending shivers down his spine. He spun around while trying to smash his tail right at Broly, but he didn't feel any impact. After he spun around, he saw no figure behind him, as if he had just imagined everything. Ah! Cooler smashed into the ground like a meteor. After the dust settled one could see how Cooler was arching his back in pain. In the distance, Cooler saw something approaching. A fraction of a second later, Broly crashed heavily into Cooler's stomach. Blake cough. Cooler instantly puked out blood as Broly looked at him while standing on his body. What, what do you, how want? Cooler's eyes were already bloodshot as he stared at the Scion's mocking gaze. What I want? Broly couldn't help but smile evil as he looked at the pathetic sight this galactic emperor showed him. I want your soul. Cooler's eyes widened as he heard that. His soul? He panicked. This can't be anything good. Maybe death would be a better option. He would rather die than let the Scion do anything with his soul. Even if the one was bluffing, he stood no chance against him. He wanted to explode but just as he was about to do it, his mind went blank for a second and the energy he gathered dispersed again. It only lasted for a second, but as soon as he regained consciousness, he saw how a hand covered his face. Before he could do anything, he felt a sharp pain on his forehead. It was like something was drilling into his brain. His body was twitching for just a few moments, but after the hand was retracted, foam could be seen coming out of Cooler's mouth. Broly watched satisfied at Cooler before he disappeared from the planet. After a few moments, Cooler woke up and looked around confused. He didn't see anyone. He stood up and called for his spaceship. Shortly afterwards Cooler's armored squadron woke up as well and saw how Cooler stepped inside the landed spaceship. They quickly followed Cooler. Lord Cooler, what happened? Cooler only glanced at him. I am going to train for a while. Proceed as you did, and expand and absorb my brother's and my father's forces. Understood, but my lord, what about the scion called Goku? Don't bother with him. Salza saw the solemn look on Cooler's face and didn't dare to say anything. Cooler sat down on his throne inside the ship and contemplated about what happened while sending away the one that reported about the destroyed monitor records and cameras. He tried to remember everything after he heard the news, but he wasn't able to recall anything. He didn't think about it anymore and focused on what he wanted to do now. After hearing how his brother was defeated, he first thought about revenge, but he wanted to get stronger first. He would become stronger than any other being in the universe, until even a super scion was just an ant compared to him. While Broly was out confronting Cooler, Jine and Raditz were invited into the Kame house after finally calming down. Jine was wiping away her tears as someone brought her a tea. Thank you. Jine thanked Bulma for the tea, 
which stunned the others in the room. There were currently Krillin, Yamcha, Puar, Bulma, Master Rashi, and Gohan, besides Goku. I didn't know Science could be polite. Ow. Krillin said, who got smacked by Bulma right after. Jain smiled bitterly as she heard that. Yes, most of us are very eager to search for battles, since we are a warrior race. It is in our nature to seek challenges and confrontations. Of course, this doesn't justify our horrendous past. I hope that, in the future, our race won't be seen as warmongers. Our race? Are there more of you? I thought you were all killed when your planet was destroyed by Frisia. Yes, many died, but a few hundreds were saved by space and time rifts that brought us to another planet. Currently, there are just above 400 Scions still alive. They are building a new base for Broly. Broly? You know Broly? Bulma shouted out as the others exclaimed as well. Jain smiled bitterly. Yes, he is the new king of a science. Wait, wait, he is your king? Are you following his orders by coming here? Is, is he here? Bulma's voice trembled a bit as she said that. Krillin was holding his head and the atmosphere became tense again. Since it was only a few months back, they still remembered how effortless Broly and his subordinates took care of Goku and the other Super Saiyan from the future. Sai, he doesn't know we came here but it wouldn't be a surprise if he gets to know of our travel here soon. But you don't have to worry, he wouldn't break his word. I think he would enjoy it even more if he knew that he would dispose of me when I am at my happiest. Dispose of you? Do you have some kind of grudge? I have much influence in the Scion community and I have guided them to a more peaceful thinking. Sigh. Broly of course wasn't very pleased about it. He tried to appease and keep me quiet by bringing back Raditz, but I knew if I gave in, millions would die again because of us Scions. After he knew that this approach didn't work, he needed another solution. As he knew that he just couldn't kill me because many were still loyal to me. He had heard about you, Kakarot, and thought it was the perfect opportunity to torture me by getting to you. Sai, it is only because of me that he targets you. Ha ha ha, don't worry about it. I will just have to beat him, Goku said while hitting his chest. He already told me that you became a super scion, but this won't be even close to enough. That is also why I am here. Aaliyah, she is one of Broly's wives, had pitted me and brought me here. She told me how to ascend past the Super Scion, maybe with this you will be able to defeat him. I think she told me that you both had fought the last time she was here. Yes, of course I remember, she is really strong. Ah, uh, how does she compare to Broly? She wouldn't stand a chance. There is still a difference between normal and legendary Super Scions. For real? That makes me even more excited, Goku said while laughing happily. Jain smiled gently as she saw that. If her son had become depressed after hearing the difference between him and Broly, she might have told them the truth. You sure are carefree, little brother. There are at least four other super scions among his subordinates, and they as well as Broly don't slack. They are constantly training to become stronger. He, <laughs> I only have to become stronger than them. Goku didn't seem to let these words get to him, as his eyes were practically burning with fighting desire. I will help you, dad. You take care of Broly, and we will take care of the other Scions. Gohan shouted in a determined manner, although it was more cute to the eyes of the others. Nevertheless, even Krillin seemed to be fired up by his words. You are Kakar, I mean Goku's son? Jain asked. She didn't have time to approach him as she was telling her story, but she was instantly able to tell that this was her grandson after she first saw him. Ah yes, this is my son, Gohan. Jain approached him and kneeled down before rubbing her face in Gohan's. You are so cute. Oh, my and a strong one as well. Jain said as she was hugging Gohan. Seeing this and after the heavy subject about Broly was done, the atmosphere had softened and became more welcoming. Although Raditz was a bit quieter than his mom, everyone could tell that he had changed for the better. It didn't take them long to get to know each other better. Bulma and Krillin were narrating their tales about how they have met Goku and what they have experienced on their journey to gather the seven Dragon Balls. The others added some things as they told their story. Jain was smiling happily as she intently listened to what a childhood her son had. It was getting late, and after the story ended, she got up. I think we have intruded your home for too long. We have a house in the west not far from here, we will be living there. I hope I will not be a bother if I visited you. Kakar, Goku, if it is okay with you, I want to get to know your wife in the future. Sure. How about I bring her here the next time? And you can call me Kakarot. Vegeta does it as well anyway. Jain smiled happily and caressed his cheek before hugging him again. They separated and Raditz suddenly stepped forward. Kakarot, if you ever need a sparring partner, 
I will be glad to assist. Raditz extended his hand. Goku saw his determination. Without thinking further, Goku reached out and shook it. I sure will. Raditz couldn't help but let out a smile. See you around, Kakarot. Next time I will tell you about your father, Jain said as she waved her arm. Ha ha ha, can't wait. See you, mom. Jain was stunned for a moment. Tears started to appear as she smiled brightly and wiped them away. Jain again approached him and gave him another hug before taking off with Raditz. The others were watching her leave. She sure is a pitiful woman. I can't imagine what she must have felt after experiencing all that. Goku, I want you to promise something. I want you to kick Broly's, but before he can hurt your mother again. Don't worry. I will make sure no one touches her. Goku's voice was icy, untypical to his usual carefree personality. Although they didn't know each other longer than a day, he wanted to protect Jain. Maybe it was because of what she had told him or because he never had a mother figure. Maybe it was the love Jain was spewing out at him and his son. But he had already opened up to her and would see her as his mother in the future. No one will be allowed to touch her. It was a long day for Krino. After he had failed the last mission, which led to thousands of deaths from a newly allied force, he had been put on guard duty. The only reason he didn't lose his job was because of his past achievements. He was a top officer with a strong body. He wasn't like most of the Galactic Patrol who relied on weapons and fights but on his physical strength. The organization he was working for stretches through the whole Milky Way galaxy and had several allies throughout the universe, but there were also many space criminals that caused havoc on other planets. With his strength, he was able to put an end to several criminal organization. He also helped to contain the damage the Frisia Force caused. Fortunately for their galaxy, the ringleaders of Cold's and Frisia's army were taken care of, including the so-called emperors themselves. He always wanted to get rid of Frisia and Cold himself, but he knew that his strength wouldn't amount to anything against them. He was already annoyed that he had to stay here and guard the Galactic King's spaceship while Cooler's force was gobbling up Cooler's relatives' resources and now, he had to talk with this dumbass. For the last time, you aren't getting to meet the Galactic King. He has important business he needs to attend to. I think your king wants to hear about what I have to say. Yeah, right. You think anyone would let you through with your getup? Krino waved his finger up and down while pointing at the cloaked figure in front of him. I don't have time for this. I wanted to force myself, but I don't care anymore. I will treat you like a villain. The cloaked figure muttered as he began walking towards the door behind Krino. No step further, or I will have to resort to force. The figure in front of Krino didn't show any indication that he would stop. Oh, look at this. This is going to be good. I hope Krino doesn't beat him up too hard. A green alien said as he and a few others of different races stepped into the entrance to the spaceship. On their shoulders were numerous stars indicating their high rank. Ha ha ha. He will probably extend his position as an honorable guard. Another mocked. Evidently, they weren't on good terms with Krino. Surprisingly, Krino didn't bother with them as he would usually but focused on the cloaked figure. Although he was confident in his strength, he strangely felt threatened. His instincts were telling him to run, but he had a job to do. After the distance between the two lessened to two meters, Krino stomped the ground, propelling him forwards. In an instant, he appeared in front of the stranger and punched out. His fist directly tore apart the cloak, leaving only shreds behind. What? Where is Dash? A precise force hit his neck and his body instantly went limp as he slumped to the ground unconsciously. The other patrollers' eyes widened as they saw how easily Krino was defeated. Although there was bad blood between them, they knew of his strength. An instant later, their face became solemn and immediately rushed out to surround the figure. Stop right there! The green alien that shouted out first pointed an arm cannon right at the figure, as did his teammates. Now that he wasn't cloaked anymore, they could see what he looked like. A tall muscle-packed alien with middle long black hair and a brown tail, they immediately became alert as they saw the tail waving around. They instantly knew what race he belonged. Weren't they extinct? What do they want here? Is it for revenge? Those thoughts were running through their mind as they went through every possibility that they could think of. Science a ferocious race that had caused years of suffering and pain as they wreaked havoc across the galaxy. They had clashed with them numerous times but now a scion had arrived in front of their king's door. They have to stop him no matter the cost. Without waiting, they started shooting at him from all sides. The explosions obscured their view and any other alien would be dead by now. But they didn't stop. They knew that Scions were tenacious and considering how easily he had defeated Krino, they didn't take any chance to put this Scion down before he could do anything. 
Go get the laser cannon, the green alien ordered while continuing shooting at the explosion-filled area. Soon enough a gigantic cannon was rolled out and the green alien immediately took hold of the controls and aimed at the area where the scion stood. Clear the area! His teammates ran off to the sides after hearing his shout and an instant later a concentrated high-energy beam shot out of the cannon. In an instant it completely tore apart the entrance of the ship. By now the whole spaceship was on alert as the sirens were going off. After seeing no movement, the patrollers sighed in relief. No one was able to take a hit of that and come out unscathed, not even the most elite scions. The dust slowly settled and the local patrollers, who witnessed the whole situation, began to cheer. That wasn't nice. A calm, deep voice rang out in the now causing the whole area to fall into silence. The voice sent shivers down the ones present. I'm impossible. If you can't offer anything else, I am going to meet your king. The scion started walking again, but this time the one present felt like a mountain pressed them to the ground. They couldn't endure it as they immediately collapsed and were forced to lay down flat on the ground. It didn't matter if it was a low or high-ranked patroller. They were all affected the same. Even those proud of their strength weren't able to do anything against the pressure. Only after the scion had left the room, the pressure was lifted but most still couldn't move as they were too exhausted. After a short while the scion encountered many who tried to stop him, but he had forced them all to admit defeat without putting as much as a single finger on them. It didn't take him long until he reached the doors where their king would be waiting in. The scion opened the door and was greeted with a dark red alien with horns on his head. The alien exuded a strong power. Jinyu level? Not bad. The scion muttered. After he spoke out his gaze seemed to pierce the red alien. The next moment he collapsed and directly fainted. A light green octopus-like alien with a crown on his head was sitting on a chair staring at the scion anxiously. He knew that he was screwed if even his bodyguard, that was one of the strongest in this organization, was easily disposed of. Hello, I am the Galactic King. Do, do you mind telling me with whom I have the pleasure with and what I can do for you? The scion smiled as he heard that. Finally, an acceptable greeting. I am Broly, the King of the Scions. From the perspective of the Galactic King, the smile of Broly was like the one of a fierce beasts that would tear him apart any second now. I was just here to do some business with you. Broly stepped closer and stretched out his and the Galactic King first shrank back, but seeing that Broly only wanted a handshake, he put forward one of his tentacles. Without being able to react the hand evaded his tentacle and was put on the Galactic King's head. For a second the face of the Galactic King scrunched up before relaxing again. The Galactic King offered Broly a seat before sitting down as well. All right, what kind of business have you in mind? A smile appeared on Broly's face as he looked at this octopus in front of him. If it weren't for the organization he had built up, Broly wouldn't have given him even a glance. Although this organization was weak, he had to admit that the reputation on the other hand will do him good in his conquest. Nothing serious, you will just collaborate with us science. A week later Broly hovered in space looking at the planet in front of him. The planet looked like it was placed inside what seemed to be a wooden box. On the box was a red circle with a triangle inside. Other than the box, the planet was covered with colorful trees. This was Zuno's planet. Zuno the one who was said to virtually know everything that has ever happened in Universe 7. He also has knowledge beyond this. In the newer series of Dragon Ball Super, Bulma and Jocko traveled here to get knowledge about the Super Dragon Balls. Finally found it. The shielding on this planet is not bad to say the least. He, Zuno you are the last person on my list. Broly thought while grinning. A moment later Broly disappeared from space and appeared in front of a building that looked like it was influenced from Japanese architecture. Of course, this was impossible as Japan doesn't exist in this multiverse. At least not the Japan Broly was thinking of. Suddenly identical small light purple aliens with an oversized head and earlobes came rushing out and surrounded Broly. Of course, he already knew why they approached him. It was because, we are here, because Zuno said to us that an uninvited guest has appeared. Lord Zuno will not receive those without an appointment. Oh, and when would be the next appointment? This would be in... One of them browsed through a notebook in his hand before stopping after a few pages. Five years. Then Zuno would be ready to receive you. Broly only grinned after hearing this. This is rather surprising. I thought he knew virtually everything, but he doesn't want to receive me? Broly's glare gradually changed while saying this until he stared at them with cold eyes that sent shivers down their spine. Without saying anything else he passed them and headed inside. 
leaving them behind. They didn't make any attempt at stopping him as they froze out of fear. After walking inside, he stepped through a door and a bigger version of those aliens outside sat in a brown pot while staring at him. Broly could see the sweat running down his cheek. So he does now about me. I wonder if he knows what I want from him. Broly's eyes swept across the seemingly empty room, but he instantly knew that there were several entities hiding in the shadows. They were all on the level of Super Perfect Cell and would be mayor characters if they appeared in the public, at least in the Milky Way that is. I hope you don't mind me coming uninvited. Broly's deep voice boomed with unhidden killing intent. Oh, of course not. Broly stretched out his arm to the side with his palm facing towards himself. Suddenly one of Zuno's assistant that was outside flew across the room like he was being pulled by his clothes and only stopped right in front of Broly's palm. Broly turned towards the assistant. Tell me, how many questions could your master answer a day? I, is about 20, gulp, 20 questions per day. I see you can leave now. The assistant flew out of the room again and the door shut as well. Broly looked at Zuno in front of him again. Tell me, everything about the super dragon balls. After asking that Broly activated his vision of truth. He called the vision he gained from the crystals that way since Life Force Vision was no longer a suitable name for it. Super Dragon Balls, or other, known as Wishing Orbs, were created in the year 41 of Calendar of the Dragon God Zalama. Zuno was rattling about random fact about the Super Dragon Balls. Of course, Broly already knew about the important stuff about these Dragon Balls. What he really was trying to figure out was if his actions would have consequences. He saw how lights from space and time were flickering into Zuno's brain. It seemed like he didn't have all the knowledge, but he gained it naturally. He was merely retelling what the universe was willingly offering to him. All right, that's enough. Tell me about the Origins crystals. You already asked your question, Dash. Broly outstretched his arm and a green sphere appeared in his palm which was capable of instantly pulverizing this planet. Zuno was profusely sweating already. Underst understood. The Origins crystals are crystals not from this universe. Broly raised an eyebrow as he waited for Zuno to continue. Teach, that's it. I, I don't have anything more than that. Useless. What about the curse placed on us Scions? Without trying to annoy Broly anymore, Zuno started talking. The curse of Scions was placed time immemorial by all races' combined efforts after realizing that they weren't able to erase Scions for good. It seals the Scion strength with every generation by regressing their cells making their body far weaker than they are naturally but they still couldn't prevent their natural traits like the Zenkai. The modern Scion can only slowly access a small part of their natural strength by training and using their Super Scion and their Ozuru power, opening the seal bit by bit. After opening the seal as far as it can, the Scion's Ozuru and Super Scion power can be merged with immense willpower once again, like it did after the curse was first placed on the Scion race. If a Scion fully merges the two powers before the seal was opened to an appropriate degree, the curse can use these powers to fuel itself, making the Scion powerless forever. The method on how to break or how the curse itself works is sealed away by the highest order and only one is able to access it. The king of all. Even the Super Dragon Balls are powerless in that regard. Broly's brows furrowed after listening to everything Zuno said. Even a drop of sweat rolled down his cheek after listening about the fact of combining one's Super Scion and Oozuru power. He was fortunate that he listened to the feeling he had back then when he was thinking about trying to go Super Scion for. If he did, he would probably still be on Perdidus now. It was a good thing that he doesn't merge the two powers now, when he uses Akari plus Super Scion. It is more of a combined usage of those powers rather than fusing them together, so he could still use and advance in those techniques until he is ready for Super Scion 4. What makes him concerned was that he wasn't able to break the curse without going through Zeno. Broly also didn't think that Zeno was the child like he was portrayed in the series and if he were, it would concern Broly even more as it would mean that his life and anything that he would build up could be destroyed in an instant. He hoped that Zeno was putting up a front, maybe he wasn't even the Omni-King in this reality, who knows. Either way, the only thing he could do now was train to the utmost limit, attain Super Saiyan 4, gain Divine Key and maybe combine the two. Broly looked back at Zuno who seemed utterly exhausted. You okay? I know, to get the information to this question took its toll on me, since it was hidden away by divine beings. I won't be able to answer any questions for the next few years. Zuno carefully observed Broly, frightened that he would go on a rampage. Broly again used his vision of truth to observe Zuno and he could tell as well that his soul was exhausted which completely threw his initial plan of. He wanted to manipulate his soul like he did with Cooler and the Galactic King, but it seems like the ability relies on his soul. 
If that was the case, a small alteration to his soul would affect or even remove his ability. What a shame. He would have been a great puppet. All right. I will be coming back in the future for you to answer me more questions if necessary. Seems like I have to put away questions about the legendary Super Scion and Yamoshi off for the moment. Maybe I will just use the Dragon Ball next time. From afar, a small point on a comet could be seen glowing in a green hue. If one came closer a figure could be seen hovering cross-legged just above the ground of the speeding comet. The figure had green hair and his bulging muscles were going from tense to relaxed couple of times per second. Of course, this figure was Broly, who chose this speeding comet as his meditation location. His eyes were slightly trembling as if he was in a struggle. From time to time his key was flaring up, expanding the already big crater around him. He was destroying the ground with his mere key leakage. Obviously, that wasn't something new even normal super science would be able to destroy the ground with their key. But that was actually a problem. A problem Broly was trying to fix right now. It wasn't something life-threatening but a performance issue. Even ascended super science like Kana and Aaliyah were able to transform without causing a calamity. Even Aze and Taro were able to control their key in that way. Yes, their control was relatively better than Broly's. It had something to do that his key was more potent, be it its strength or nature, it was a level harder for him to reach the same control as they have now. If he were a regular super scion, Broly was confident that he would have already achieved super scion 3, even though he wasn't sure if his strength would be greater than now. It has been a year since he began to hover in this position. After many months he had reached a level where he won't destroy his surroundings anymore while transforming and there had been glimpses of a breakthrough, but he was missing something. It wasn't the amount of accumulative key since his key was by far enough to break through to a legendary ascended Super Scion, LSSJ2. He knew that some could ascend beyond Super Scion by relying on their emotional energy, but Broly knew that Aaliyah and Kana weren't using it. They used this tingly feeling on their back to easily reach this form. Even if Broly knew the methods, training, emotional upheaval, a desperate need or the tingly feeling, he couldn't ascend and it started to piss him off. He was only a hair's breadth away, he could practically feel it. He started to think about how Kale achieved her legendary Super Scion 2. Her form was essentially a compressed version of her usual berserk form, but that was her. Kale was after all from another universe. They had progressed differently throughout the ages, but still. He knew after hearing about the curse, that even though there are probably differences, they both were still legendary super science. There had to be more similarities than differences. It was entirely possible that by compressing his own body to a smaller form, he could achieve the next level as well. But he was hesitating. He knew that even with his 3 meter tall physique, there were no losses in terms of speed, strength or energy costs. If he now compressed his body, he may become stronger all around, but he would lose his reach. One may consider the fact of reach as unimportant but in a high-level battle where the contestants were on the same level, the one with a longer striking range would most likely win. Obviously if one became so large that one had trouble to hit his opponent due to the height difference, it would be more of a disadvantage but 3 meters wasn't in that category yet. Obviously, there are some beings that won't reach 1 meter making his height disadvantageous, but those were less likely to meet, considering the heights of the ones that would take part in the Tournament of Power. From that Broly estimated that the general elite should be at least taller than 1 meter. One might also argue that with key blades and blasts, one could make this difference of reach negligible, but Broly didn't want to miss out on something that could raise his stakes by a small margin, even if that margin was less than 1%. He was contemplating now if it was truly worth it. Broly relaxed his body after thinking about it for a long time and coming to a conclusion. He knew that he wouldn't be losing his advantage but merely reducing it a bit. It was rather unfavorable to delay his evolution and progress because he was too stubborn to let go of minor advantageous. Sometimes it was more appropriate to be flexible and open-minded to changes. With that thought in mind, Broly placed his feet firmly on the comet. Broly stretched his hands above his hands. His whole body started to glow as his key started rising. Strangely, there wasn't any indication of the violent energy like in the past. He only started glowing brighter by the second until his features couldn't be identified anymore. In an instant, he pulled his arms down as if he was showing of his biceps while the light trembled all around him. From outside one could only see a figure that was covered by a green layer of light that was slowly shrinking in size from its initial 3 meter height. Arc Rayera! A low beast-like roar out of key rattled the whole comet Broly was standing on. A second later the light intensifies like an explosion. And like an explosion the speeding comet was blown up into thousands of debris which shot away like lighting. 
The shockwave pushed everything back, even light seemed to be deflected by the high energy output. Space trembled. It looked like rips in the fabric of space would appear any second. It took a few minutes until space went back to its normal order and light was able to reach the place a figure was floating in space. A 2.5 meter tall figure with spiky hair that rose completely to a point and glowed slightly green. Green lighting appeared all around his body. Broly floated in space with closed eyes as he felt the changes of his body. If one would have described his body as a balloon before, it would be more of a steel ball now. The difference was immense. His skin's toughness had risen to a completely different level. He could feel that his strength and key were twice as strong as his maximum output in his normal legendary state, but that was just his benefits of his Super Scion transformation. The compression had brought him other benefits that he wouldn't have imagined before. He could feel the explosiveness of his strength increase tremendously. He felt like he could instantly reach his fastest speed in an instant, which meant that his acceleration had risen by far more than twice like he anticipated beforehand. He wasn't even sure himself what his current compatibilities were. Of course, the greatest gain was the toughness of his body. His resilience, his overall defense rose terrifyingly. The only downside to this form was the high energy expenditure to maintain this form. In his normal legendary state, he could basically stay in it indefinitely because he could recover more energy than he used. Of course, that was only if he wasn't recklessly spending it. Now, on the other hand, the maintenance was high as he needed energy to compress his body. The expenditure was so high, he wouldn't be able to maintain it for more than 10 minutes and that was if he didn't move at all like he did now. Obviously, this was because he wasn't used to this form yet. He would need to get used to it until it was second nature to transform to this form. For the next 8 minutes he felt his body by flexing every muscle he could and make himself familiar to this form. He finally reverted back and started to calm down again. He could feel his body arch. It certainly took its toll on his body. He was exhausted. Good thing he expected this and didn't use up all his energy right then. After all he was without backup deep in the universe floating in space. He thought it was time to go back and look how they went with the base building. He put two fingers on his temple and searched for his planet. He had traveled far to find this comet, so it took him a second before localizing it. In the next moment he disappeared and re-emerged thousands of light years away above his planet. He looked down and saw a giant city reaching inside the jungle. It looked like the city was a combined effort of nature and civilization. Broly knew this wasn't the result of only the elves and scions. Broly saw the bustling city and started falling to the ground. He quickly approached the planet directly into the center of the city, where a tall skyscraper was built that looked like its designer came straight from the future. On his way he saw a few lights of key in the aura. Seems like some people tried to catch him mid-flight. He was pleased by the reaction as it showed that they already thought about invaders and have a protection model to respond accordingly. Of course, Broly wouldn't slow down to be stopped by some random stranger that didn't seem to be science but belonged to the Galactic Patrol instead. Before the guards could reach him, he disappeared from their view. The guards were shocked by the sudden disappearance of a suspicion figure. They knew that if someone could just disappear like that, they probably wouldn't stand a chance against them. So, before they wasted time to search around or deny their incompetence of not letting anyone uninvited into the city of Scions, they directly send a distress signal. Although they didn't think that anyone would be dumb enough to mess with a whole city of battle-craving Scions, they didn't want to take any chances, since this alliance was accepted and missions for it was issued by the Galactic King himself. The branch that was stationed on this planet and were now in charge of the protection, immediately received the signal and sent a response team while informing Lord Daz, who was their go-to person for any kind of troubles they got. Daz got the signal and without hesitation he sent out a response team of five veteran scions that could be considered as formidable. Their strength hovered around the first million, which was impressive since they were old-schooled. Like any other scion of the old times when Vegeta was still their king, they had trouble in learning the new ways of key cultivation and had mostly hard times cultivating. Of course, the new generation of Perditus had already surpassed most of the old veterans but they were still inexperienced and in such a delicate time of their building their foundation for a universal empire, Daz had to rely on experienced fighters. Besides, the numbers of the new generation were still low and if the veterans couldn't deal with them, they probably couldn't as well. If that happened, they would need a super scion to take care of the problem. As he quickly explained the situation to these veterans, a low laughter could be heard throughout the city. The ground vibrated because of it. Ha 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 ha. Your king has returned. A deep voice full of strength resounded through the streets and even went through the walls and windows of buildings. It didn't matter if the rooms were soundproof, as the voice was filled with key. It reached every person in the city. A moment later, 
some scions started going out on the streets while cheering. It snowballed until the whole city seemed to become more alive as it was already, and the streets were filled with cheers and clapping. Although for the last year they had for super scions to rely on, after seeing that it took their king to take actions against the elves, they became increasingly aware of their weakness. If even a super scion had struggled to gain supremacy on this planet, what about them? Weren't they basically just cannon fodder? With this in mind and coupled with their arrogant, brutal and power-seeking nature, they started to train even more frantic than before. It was only natural that many of them were relieved that their pillar came back. That didn't mean that their motivation disappeared. Only personal strength would be worth fighting for, that was the mentality of many scions. This, as a contrast to their war-starting tendencies, was being promoted and supported even with the new generation. This was what Broly wanted. Scions that didn't go around and start wars but still want the power, the strength to crush their enemies. He didn't want heartless war machines but warriors that grew increasingly powerful with time. It was a difficult step for the Scions, but that is why Broly gained the support of the Galactic Patrol. The Galactic Patrol was able to send difficult missions their way, while Scions were able to go after their thirst for action and battle. It was a win-win situation. Of course, if a Scion made mistakes he wouldn't be judged by the Galactic Patrol but by their own people that was the deal Broly made with the Galactic King. Since it wasn't publicly stated that he was away, it caused a bit of confusion among the Galactic Patrol, but they were quickly informed that they didn't have to search for the person that just entered the city, since that was the Scion's King. While the Galactic Patrol was relieved, the Elves were too. Since it wasn't announced that Broly left, it made the Elves uneasy. They were subjugated and tasked by King Broly. They had a purpose when they followed Broly, but they felt unsure about someone else giving them commands. Many of the generals of the elves were especially relieved. Their thought process was simple and reflected the thought of many elves. Since Broly was strong and had evidentially the technology, he could have enslaved them easily, but he didn't, which meant that his intentions were genuine. Many even gave their all in moving up the ranks after seeing a few generals rising up the ladder of success. Of course, this was all steered by some scions, Broly had placed in administrative positions. It seemed like they were doing a good job, Broly thought as he let his gaze wander around from the highest building. After a moment of enjoying the sight and noise of a modern city, he saw a few figures flying straight towards him. He smiled as he saw that. Kana, Zangya and Taro were rushing towards him. Their speed was creating fast winds, but the materials used to build the city were tough and wouldn't easily break. Obviously, the materials weren't on the levels of Kachin, it was still enough to sustain the stray energy of someone with Frisia's power and lower. Broly. Finally, you are back. Kana was crashing straight against him. He just let her and Zangya who was just behind Kana hug him. After they let him go, he gave Taro a hug too before they headed towards his villa that was isolated a bit off in the center of the city. There were some guards that could be seen outside of it. The villa looked like a modern villa with its white stones and the many windows. It made a very open feeling without revealing everything inside. Broly could already tell the basic structure from what he was sensing. He also wondered why he would need a gigantic pool in his backyard. They went inside and headed towards a room with a long wooden table. Broly could tell it was incredible sturdy. He sat down at the head and before he could ask about the situations a robot came inside with trays of food to be served. One after the other robot came and delivered food for the Scions. Now that he saw the food, his belly was announcing itself with a loud growl. He had, after all, not eaten for an entire year. For Scions that would be akin to torture and after his breakthrough, he indeed became frighteningly hungry. After having a hearty meal, they rested a bit before talking about the general progress about this planet. The city was already built to a degree that they could almost welcome the many different races from Perdidus. The first to arrive would be Zinjo and the other Myrmidons. Obviously, with the growth they want to achieve in the future, they couldn't just gather all the races on this planet alone. They talked about a bit for a few hours and made several plans until they came to a conclusion. The higher-ups and the more important families of the races would be living on this planet. It would be kind of a symbol of their influence as it would be the center for making important decisions. As for the rest of the races, every individual race with the cooperation of science would be going to other planets without any civilization and conquer it. Every race from Perdidus that would be joining them now would be getting their own planet to govern. If they became leaders of other races, they solely would be responsible for them. It was a very lax reign on Broly's side, as they could essentially do what they want if it wasn't disadvantageous for Broly. Of course, if Broly called for their service they would have to comply. 
It was a very raw system for now but Broly only wanted to give a general direction and use this empire for his convenience. He wouldn't waste time to plan out the details like laws. For this he had subordinates to do it for him. After they were done talking about the alliances, Broly's empire would have, the door swung open. Aaliyah and A's came inside. Aaliyah was practically sprinting as she threw herself into Broly's arms. It was probably the longest the girls and Broly were apart after their journey towards Earth. Aaliyah was pouting a bit as he was longer away than expected. He said that the time he would be away would be ranging from weeks to months, but now he had been away a whole year without contact instead. Long time no see, Ace said after Aaliyah let him go for a second. Broly raised an eyebrow as he looked at Ace. Broly stood up and patted Ace's shoulders with his hands seemingly praising him. Not bad. You almost surpassed Taro. Broly said smilingly. He shot a glance at Taro and shook his head. Taro you have to step up your game if you want to maintain your position as the third strongest. Taro started groaning. I train almost every second if I have the time. Aze only trains like once per day and his progress is still far above mine. That's because you don't listen to Broly's advices. He already told you to make a training plan to write down your weights, reps, sets and pauses. If you don't keep track on how high your volume of your exercise is when you train, you won't know when and what to raise in intensity. Your physical strength obviously won't be growing as much as mine. Aze said matter of fact while Broly was just nodding his head. Indeed, train with brain then it will maximize your results. The girls were smiling. They have always trained with Broly, so everything he advised would be absorbed by them. Hey Broly, I wanted to ask this when you arrived, but did you make some progress with your breakthrough? Taro asked as he and everyone else were away that Broly had a hard time reaching the next level, even though he was the one that taught them how to. Broly only grinned as a response. Afterwards Aaliyah and Az talked about the elves in the valley. In the beginning the two were stationed there to keep watch over the elves, but after a while it became clear that they had no intentions to rebel. Of course, there were some individuals who acted up but were quickly suppressed and judged for their crimes. The two were very active public figures who were fair to everyone which garnered the elves' trust and admiration. It didn't take long for them to become very popular. As a result, Aze had many women woo him. This wasn't only true among the elves but the science as well. Considering that he was always serious and focused more on training the next generation and on his job. Aaliyah on the other hand had many admirers from both genders, but most didn't dare to approach her as she was the king's wife. Taro also joked about how Aze was practically swarmed but after he fell for an elvish woman, he himself was denied. Broly was surprised that Aze had someone he pursued. He was after all a workaholic who always did his best on the job. Nevertheless, he wished Aze the best luck for his endeavors. Taro wasn't in a different situation, but he had only Vara the succubus in his mind. After he learned the teleportation technique Kai Kai, he had visited her almost every single day on their spaceship. This was also what he meant that he spent every second training when he had the time. When he was not training, he spent most of his time with her which was also a reason why his progress had declined a bit as well, besides his ineffective training methods. Although Broly always want them to push harder and further, he knew that a mental and emotional balance was as important, if he forced Taro to train more, the result would probably worse, besides Broly was guilty of the same thing in the beginning of his relationship. He had found a balance by assigning days for each of them now, but he was quite unrestrained in the beginning. Speaking of which, he could feel the lust-filled glares on his body from his wives. He stood up and started to shoo out the now unwanted male guests out of his villa. All right, I think I will rest early today. How about we continue our chats Tomo Dash? He looked back at his wives who were gripping their own clothes and were biting their lips as they followed his every action with their eyes. In a week, we will discuss more in a week. After he closed the door after shoving Daz, Taro and Aze out, he heard the sound of cloth being torn apart. Without being able to turn around, he was quickly dragged upstairs and was thrown on the bed. He was being pressed down by several arms who were caressing every corner of his body. Two months later the forces on Exausia had already started to go out on missions for the Galactic Patrol. Broly had baptized this planet Exausia because it stood for power. Be it physical, mental or the power to rule, Broly had it all and would strive for more as he went further down his path. The Scions were mostly tasked with elimination, capturing or escorting missions. The average Scion was after all very able even among the vast cosmos. With their strength they quickly defeated and arrested or killed many criminals, making science a topic many started to talk about again. In the meantime, 
Some elves were tasked with saving races from ecological disasters as they very attuned with nature. It didn't seem like their connection was something that was restricted to their own planet. This caused them to be of major help on many planets which caused them to be admired by the normal, non-combatant races. All in all, the newly emerging Exausia forces were seen as a blessing for most. Although there were some who were still skeptical of Scions, after seeing them accompanied by the Galactic Patrol, the fear shrank by a large margin. Be it Elves or Scions, they were all wearing the same uniform with an Alpha symbol on their chest. Taro had asked Broly about it. Broly only answered that it was so Elves and Scions would feel more solidary. They have already accepted each other but the Elves still felt that they were less worth than Scions. This now was to show them that they were treated the same and belonged to the same force. While the Scions were more active in the Milky Way so was Cooler's force. After all this time they had already gobbled up the remaining forces from Frisia and Cold. They were now by far the strongest force in the whole galaxy. Additionally, with the actions of the combined efforts of the Galactic Patrol and Exausia forces, many criminal organization and lone criminals felt pressured. It looked bad for them as more and more were being arrested or even killed. Many felt like they had to join a bigger organization that could withstand the pressure of the Galactic Patrol. Many were inclined to join Cooler's forces, and many did. In a short time of two months, the old balance between the many criminal organizations tilted. Cooler's forces became stronger with every criminal the Galactic Patrol were arresting as more would join their side. Cooler's force by now was the strongest in the whole galaxy and Cooler could be seen as the sole emperor if it weren't for the patrol. The two sides clashed numerous times, but it limited itself towards the lower ranks. Although there were many fights, no Super Scion or the Cooler's armored squadron had shown themselves. Of course, no one knew that for Broly both of these forces were just his pawns to further his empire. With the Galactic Patrol, many were inclined to trade and cooperate with him. Of course, there were still many races that were hostile towards Scions, but their opinion was quickly swayed after being saved by them from Cooler's force. Their reputation started to rise in the galaxy but that was obviously not enough for Broly. Cooler's forces had started to reach out to the underground side of other galaxies, and it seemed like Cooler would be helping them out to eradicate the Galactic Patrol equivalent in their particular galaxy. Of course, as righteous as Broly was, he would send his forces to help them out. So, this is King Broly. He certainly looks tough. A thin blue humanoid alien with a horn on his forehead looked at the screen which showed how Broly landed on the roof of a skyscraper. The alien was sitting in a spaceship on one of Exausia's moons. No matter how strong he is, he will be a cold corpse after you are done with him, a feminine voice hissed out. A green-scaled slender humanoid came into the room. There were signs of some womanly curves like many female aliens in the universe had in common. She looked like a humanoid snake with her eyes resembling black marbles. He, true, we will proceed as usual, since he can teleport, keep taps on their communication. Sooner or later those idiots will offer us the perfect opportunity. Obviously, she said while her thin tongue came slithering out. Oh, King Broly, you and the Galactic Patrol should have stayed in your territory. I wish to know everything about legendary super science. I wish is easy. Purunga's eyes started glowing for a second while Broly shut his eyes as he absorbed the information that was currently invading his brain. Thy wishes have been fulfilled. Farewell. Purunga's body started disappearing after which the dragon balls started rising into the sky before dispersing in every cardinal direction. That's it. Broly mumbled as he looked at his palm. Shortly after he had returned to Exausia, he went towards New Namek and made a few wishes. He had wished for intel of the top 100 strongest beings in this universe and he became quite excited after knowing some of their capabilities. There were some who were only listed with vague information or rumors since Purunga wasn't strong enough to just analyze their powers without their permission. He also wished for a device that could redirect his energy back to himself. It was able to redirect 40% of his energy back to him, suppressing another 40% of his power. It was a way to suppress his power to 20%, but he didn't do this just to limit himself. Furthermore, it was another way to train himself in the higher forms. If he had transformed to a legendary ascended super scion on Exausia, he would have caused a catastrophe on his own planet. Now he was able to go all out without worrying to cause major damages. He could also reduce the amount it redirected, making it so he could get a feel on controlling his key step by step when being used in his higher forms. From time to time, he could lessen the amount it redirected until he achieved perfect mastery of his new form. As for the knowledge he gained from his last wish, it was underwhelming. 
He only got to know of many scions in the past that were either just labeled as such or were like him. Essentially, legendary super scions were just mutant scions born with the characteristic to naturally generate ki. There was no mystery or secret, at least Paranga didn't inform him of any possibilities. Whether it was because he was too weak or there was just nothing. A bit more interesting for Broly was the fact that Yamoshi was indeed the origin of this legend and of the legend of the super scion god. Since he was not only a legendary super scion but also became a god later on. After Yamoshi and a civil war, someone like Broly would be a legendary scion but in the times of Yamoshi and before him, Broly would be just considered a stronger scion. This caused Broly to question how strong those scions in the times of Yamoshi were exactly. He shook his head and didn't think about it anymore. He teleported back to Exausia. He emerged in his bedroom and quickly went into a trainings room. He closed the door and quickly put on a golden necklace that looked like the one from the original Broly's outfit. He himself had worn this ornament numerous times in the past, of course without its suppressing abilities. He turned into his legendary state. He directly felt how part of his power was being channeled through the necklace which was immediately redirected and suppressed another part of his power. He put the amount, being redirected to its maximum, leaving him with 20% of his power. Afterwards he turned into his ascended state and focused on using this state more efficiently. While Broly was training, Daz was given notice that a new top patroller that was being assigned to work with him. It was someone that had fought Broly before. It was a patroller that had made some mistakes and was being punished to guard duty. He had confronted Broly and was now stationed here as a way to apologize for his past actions. An image was being transferred to him, which showed a blue face with a horn on his forehead. In the report he got, this patroller was being sent with his assistant a female that resembled a snake. Without giving it much thought. To Daz, it didn't matter which patroller he was working with, this was after all their territory. No matter who it was, they had to humble himself on Scion ground. On the landing platform from the Galactic Patrol, the one assigned to cooperate with the Scions, was waiting for Krino to take over his position. He was actually fortunate that someone else had to work in his stead. It wasn't that the Scions were hostile or anything, the opposite was true actually. It was quite enjoyable, especially since the elves were beautiful to say the least and the female Scions were quite the eye candy as well but the mere thought that almost everyone he saw could instantly kill him, kept his joy limited. He looked at a spaceship quickly landing. A moment after landing two figures he had never seen before, stepped outside. They wore the armor of the Galactic Patrol but there weren't any schedules for backup or returning patrollers. He immediately approached them with a few others in tow. Which station do you belong to and why are you here? Hey, I am Krino's replacement for now, he met with a small accident on the way and is unable to get here for now. I am here until Krino arrives. Why wasn't I informed of this? I don't know sir. Oh, right you probably need our identity cards. He inspected the identity cards and scanned it with his device. Strangely it stayed red for a while until it turned green, confirming his identity as a patroller. Suddenly he was sent a message that confirmed the whole situation by saying that another patroller would be the replacement for the next few months. Since he got all the paperwork he needed, he began to show around the newcomer and his assistant. And if you need to speak with a higher up from the Exausia Force you have to talk with Lord Daz. You can find him in District B in the building C-32. Alright, this would be all. If you need to know anything just ask the other patrollers. They are already here for a while. Understood. Ahem, is it possible to meet their king? I have heard how he just walked into the Galactic King's office and wanted to meet someone like him in person. Ha ha ha. Good luck with that. I have been here for two months and was never able to meet him. Maybe if you ask Daz, he may be able to arrange a meeting. If that is all, Officer Sen, I am going on vacation now. Everything fantastic. San and his partner Sina looked at each other before grinning. Count your days, Broly. Broly was unaware of what was conspiring as he carefully trained every day to master his ascended form. A few days later Broly was training under high gravity. Incoming call. An emotionless voice sounded out. Except. Broly answered without stopping his basic body workout. Hey Broly. Des here. What's up? Sorry to bother you but the new galactic patroller. Krino. Now in charge of this branch had asked me if he and his assistant can meet you. Meet me? Why? He said that he prevented you from seeing their king when you visited. He wanted to apologize for his actions. Oh, that fellow. Tomorrow morning in the throne room after that general. In the very center of the city was a palace built with a throne room. The palace was meant to be his public resident, but he at most used the throne room for official business. The villa he was currently residing in was only for him and his wives, 
That was why there were robot maids instead of normal ones like in the palace. All right, I will bring him and his assistant there at nine in the morning. Sure. Broly hanged up the phone call. Wait, did he say him and his assistant? Why would his assistant be there for an apology? Whatever, maybe he had some other business with me. Broly continued training without bothering with that thought anymore. The next day Broly sat on his throne, resting his face on his fist after sending an elvish general away. The general had requested for his squad to be there when they conquered a planet for the Myrmidons. Obviously, he wanted to make some contribution in hope to be promoted that was why he already requested it even though the Myrmidons aren't even her yet. The early bird gets the worm. He was the only one yet, since the others were apprehensive of conquering a planet even if there weren't any civilizations, after all they were on the receiving side not long ago. The gigantic throne door was slowly opened, and a maid let two individuals inside. Broly's eyes constricted after seeing a maid open the door. Normally a guard would open it, and he also couldn't see any guard in front of the room. Although it looked like this Krino guy he had met when he visited the Galactic King, he instantly knew that only the appearance was the same. The life force and key signature were different, even though it seemed to be somewhat masked. Besides, this one seemed to be able to use magic as it was the most prominent energy inside his body. His assistant was the same, and this was something no one in the Galactic Patrol had. He saw right through them the moment he saw them. Krino didn't leave behind much of an impression, but it was still too easy for him to notice something was wrong. He silently looked at them slowly approach him. After they advanced right in front of the stairs of the throne, Krino seemed to kneel down. But before his knee touched the ground, the assistant opened her mouth to a frightening degree, showing off her fangs. In an instant, green liquid spewed out of her mouth directly at Broly, who leisurely created a key sphere blocking the liquid in the air. Meanwhile, the assistant's black eyes suddenly glowed white. A mental attack. Without being able to react to the sneak attack, Broly's mind was stunned for a fraction of a millisecond. However, this was enough for Krino to make his move. The key sphere had shattered after losing his focus and coming into contact with the liquid. In the split second, Krino arrived in front of Broly and placed his hand on his chest. Rip. A ripping sound like a muscle was torn apart sounded out in his chest. Broly stabilized his mind and punched out. It landed squarely in the stomach of Krino. Like a cannonball, his body shot through the air, directly into the wall next to the door. Broly quickly stood up and wanted to make a move, but he lost balance and fell on his knee. Blurk. Broly spewed out blood as he clenched his chest with his hand. Cough. Cough. I didn't expect for you to recover from Cena's attack so quickly. You must have some exceptional mental strength. Good thing we don't play around. Ha ha ha. The disguise of San flickered out like a broken hologram, revealing his thin blue skin and the horn on his forehead. Let me introduce myself. I am San an assassin if you didn't notice. Oh man, your punch hurt. Broly slowly looked up. His cold gaze pierced Senior, oh scary. What are you going to do now? Cough. Your heart muscle is already torn apart, and it won't take long until you die. Cena was looking at Broly like he was already dead. Just finish it and leave. Cena said coldly. Sure. San walked towards the crouching Broly. Broly looked at the ground before closing his eyes. He thought about what happened just a moment ago. The assistant used some kind of corrosive magic attack. While he was dealing with that attack, she followed up with a soul attack that was entirely focused on disrupting one's mind. At that moment San had already closed the distance and used his ability, which caused his own life force to turn against him directly bursting the cells in his heart. This ambush alone used three different powers in a single moment to completely throw off the opponent. Those energies weren't something just any hillbillies can use. In fact, those powers were rarities in the universe and someone who can effectively use them together in a single attack was even rarer. He was too careless. He knew that something was wrong but was still caught off guard. If he had taken the initiative, he would have eliminated them easily. Sun bent down and tried to put his hand on Broly's head. But Broly suddenly stood up while causally using his hand to push Sen's away. Sen's eyes widened. He quickly thrust his hand forward, directly placing his hand on Broly's chest like he did before. He started grinning before his face froze. Broly grasped Sen's wrists and twisted it to the sides, making Sen kneel down in pain. Ark! How your heart are! Sen agonizing scream sounded out in the throne room. Sina was shocked as she saw this. She knew better than anyone that once someone touches Sen, their only fate that awaited them would be death. I, Broly's deep, calm voice resounded out. His voice seemed to withhold the boiling rage inside him. 
I am going to bathe this place in your blood. His shout was accompanied by a terrifying force that cracked open the ground. The windows instantly shattered into thousands of pieces as the whole room was filled in a green light, blinding San and Cena. The moment they were able to see again, a 2.5 figure stared at them with unhidden and pure killing intent seething out of his body. His hair slightly glowed green and lightning appeared around him. I I tell you WH who send us, Sun stuttered, after hearing that Broly raised him in front of him by his arm. I I will dash, Broly put his other arm on his shoulder and started to pull his arm and shoulder in opposite directions. The muscles in Sen's arm were slowly tearing apart, fiber by fiber. The agonizing screams filled the hall and extended out into the city for everyone to hear. Cena stared at how Broly cruelly ripped Sen's arm off. She started backing off unconsciously. Her mind was in utter chaos. She couldn't understand what was happening. In one moment Broly looked like he was about to die. In the next he had transformed to a terrifying monster. Cena was completely terrified but her long time as an assassin had tempered her mind. She quickly backed away before turning around going into a full sprint. As soon as she did, she bumped into a wall, completely blanking her mind. A wall? She looked at the abs she had crashed into. She slowly looked up as cold sweat was running down her back. She looked at the face in front of her, who was holding a miserable-looking senior. Where do you think you were going? Aitsina was trembling heavily. Tears started to appear on her face. She stumbled backwards as she was losing herself to fear. Don't worry. I will take my time. Dozens of minutes passed with screams and snapping sounds coming out of the throne room. I don't hear anything, Kana said quietly while looking at the palace. Normally Broly's aura or anyone's wouldn't leak out to the surroundings, since the training rooms greatly reduced any kind of leakage. Now in the middle of the city Broly's key leaked out and made the ground tremble. As soon as the spike of energy leaked out of the palace, Daz, Taro, Zongya and Kana had sprinted here, but they were only greeted by agonizing screams and beast-like growls. It sounded like a beast was mauling people to death, but they knew that it was Broly who was running wild in there. At this point Daz was starting to sweat as it was the exact time he had told the new patroller of the Galactic Patrol to be here. Something had to have gone terribly wrong. A while later Aaliyah and Aze came flying over as well, but like the others they didn't dare to step inside. A raging Broly wasn't something they were able to handle. If Broly lashed out, they wouldn't necessarily come out alive again. I don't hear anything either. Should we step in? Aaliyah said hesitantly. I am going in with Daz. You secure the area. We don't want anyone to enter. Oh, and prevent anyone from leaving this planet either, just in case. Kana said before going in with Daz. It didn't take them long to arrive in the throne room, but the way felt much longer for the two as the time seemed to slow down by the menacing atmosphere. The ground and walls were covered in cracks and the windows were shattered. The only reason why the palace was still standing was because they had put extra effort into the durability of this building. It was the toughest building on this planet by far. They had finally reached the throne room. As soon as they saw the sight of the room, they took a sharp breath in. In the middle of the room was a pool of blood with splashes all around it. There were drops of blood tracing from the middle to the door, next to it a trace of something bloody being dragged back to the pool in the middle. There were bloody shreds spread all over the floor, but nothing resembled something complete. Nothing was bigger than a fingertip with the exception of two heads in the middle of the pools. The heads were messily ripped off the shoulders as they were slightly tilted on the stumps. The two faces had only bloody eye holes. The jaws were loosely dropping onto the ground while the teeth were scattered in front of the heads. Daz and Kana slowly looked up the throne at the sitting figure, who coldly stared at them. Broly was resting his head on his bloody palm. He slowly tapped his finger on his armrest like a metronome. It was the only thing that sounded out in the room. Two assassins, Broly said coldly. Daz quickly kneeled down, touching the ground with his forehead. This is my fault. I didn't thoroughly check their profiles. This will never happen again. Broly's tapping stopped after Daz spoke. Who was in charge of the guards in front of the throne room? I her name was Brenna. An outstanding warrior from the new generation. Did she have a family? She was the lone child. But her parents are in good health. They live in District D. Tell them to meet me. Go and recover Brenna's body. She should be lying in a storage room in the back corner. Daz's eyes widened before he started gritting his teeth. Understood. Daz, in the future double check the identities and make sure all the incoming ships are received by us. Additionally, 
Let our scientists look over this device and make some countermeasures. It can let the user appear as someone else and if they have enough samples, it can even mask key signature. It appears to be a one-time use device though, so let the scientists know before they try it out. Broly pointed his finger at Daz and a small bracelet flew towards him. You can leave. Understood. Daz stood up and sprinted out, making his way towards the storage room. He made his way to the end of the room and saw her cold body lying behind numerous boxes. She had a shocked expression on her face, and her mouth and chest were covered with dried blood. Broly looked at Kana and his gaze softened a bit. Kana, tell the others to come in after I have spoken with Brenna's parents. All right, do you need something else? Yes, I want you to confirm if anyone else was killed by the two. Afterwards go to Earth and revive them with the Dragon Balls. Kana looked at him silently and already knew what Storm Broly will cause. Understood. I am on my way. Kana left and told the others of the situation. After Broly had told Brenna's parents of the situation, they almost broke down. But Broly quickly told them about the Dragon Balls, which calmed them down greatly. It didn't take long until Brenna was revived again. She seemed to be the only victim of this whole assassination, besides Krino, but Broly couldn't care less about him. Shortly after everything calmed down a lot, the other powerhouses of Exausia, namely Aaliyah, Taro, Kana, and Zanya, came into the now clean throne room. Today I was targeted by two assassins going by the name of San and Sina. They were famous in the whole universe as someone who could kill almost anyone, even those above their strength. They were sent by an emperor of the Andromeda galaxy, Mamba. He had promised them a pathetic solar system as a reward. It appears that since we didn't show ourselves to the public, they think we are some weaklings they can eliminate whenever they want. Aze you will stay here and keep watch over Exausia. If something happens, call us immediately. For the rest of you, every one of you, gather a team of ten till tomorrow. We will move out tomorrow and crush this fool's empire. Understood. The four quickly moved out and started to gather their teams. Oh Mamba, I am going to squish your skull beneath my boot. Broly mumbled as killing intent was seething out of his body. The throne's armrest was already pulverized under his tight grip. In the next morning Zongya, Aaliyah, Kana and Taro were standing sturdily on a platform. Behind them, 40 elite warriors with four spaceships. There were even some elves mixed in them. They had determined gazes as they looked at their king in front of them. By now the assassination was already known by all in the city. Something like that spreads like wildfire. Listen, we are going to the Andromeda Galaxy. Anyone who is in our way, kill. Don't spare a single person of Mamba's force. We are going to eradicate this empire. It shall only be remembered as the empire that dared to try to assassinate a king. Ahu. Good. Now step inside your spaceship and move out. Without saying anything, they stepped inside and shortly afterwards, they seemed to blink out of existence. Broly stepped inside his spaceship and disappeared as well. A few light years inside the borders of the Andromeda Galaxy, Five spaceships appeared in the empty space. After emerging there, their engine started, and they sped off towards the spiral galaxy in front of them. Broly didn't know exactly where Mamba was since he was able to hide his key with some kind of devices, but he knew from San and Sina where his spaceship was last. The only reason why they knew of the location was because they could only be hired by someone of status. After hearing their names, Broly figured out that they were actually on the list of the top 100 strongest beings in this universe. They were at place 98 and 95 respectively. Of course, Mamba was on the list as well, placed 56. There was not much known about his abilities but according to his rank, he should be somewhat formidable. Broly took his necklace off and put his battle armor on. He couldn't afford to play around. He still has no idea how high the difference between ranks was, but no matter how strong Mamba is or what abilities he had, he is going to die. This wouldn't be a fight. This will be a slaughter fest. Five spaceships were speeding further into the Andromeda Galaxy, heading straight for a planet in a binary star system. On the spaceship was the same big alpha symbol. These spaceships were of course Broly and the other powerhouses of Exausia with their elite squad. Broly was watching out of his window, watching at the two stars in the distance. It wouldn't take long until they would reach this star system. There was the meeting location between Mamba and San and Sina. Suddenly, there was a ringing tone indicating incoming information. Broly instantly knew it was the data he had requested a few days ago. Coolers and his own forces had already been here for a few months and of course had already made connections to their respectively sides of the galactic community. They were to send him any information about Mamba's forces. 
As soon as he got the information, he sent Aaliyah, Taro, and Zhongya, Kana in two teams towards Exauja's forces that had already made contact to this galaxy's version of the Galactic Patrol. After getting the order, the other spaceships simple disappeared from space, only to emerge again hundreds of light years away. They would assist them in destroying Mamba's camps all around this galaxy. Of course, considering that Mamba sent assassins for his head, he knew that Mamba would most likely plant some traps in these camps or sent more assassins. That was the reason why he sent them in teams of two, so they could support each other if needed. As for Cooler's forces, they were excluded in engaging Mamba's forces. He needed Cooler to contact Mamba himself. He ordered Cooler to seemingly friendly approach Mamba so he could lure him somewhere. If Broly knew on which planet Mamba was, his fate would be a sealed deal. Obviously, he didn't only rely on Cooler for getting to Mamba but would also make personal investigations. With his ability to influence someone's soul and magic techniques that could confuse a mind, he could force any information that he wanted out of someone. After giving his orders, he and his spaceship disappeared from sight, only to appear a few hundred kilometers above the target planet. The spaceship hovered in the air without moving until a section on the side of the outer wall opened and extended a staircase. It looked like the spaceship had landed on an invisible platform. Broly stepped out of his spaceship onto the stairs. He looked down at the twelve fast approaching figures that were flying towards him. It didn't take them long to arrive. They pointed their arm cannons at Broly, before they started to mock and laugh at him. Another one of you Exausia bastards. What do you think you are doing here, bastard? This is Mamba's territory. He, you should quickly run away before we are going to kill you. Broly looked at them coldly, which made them unconsciously shiver. I don't like your expression. Do you want to freaking die? I will murder your butt if you don't piss off right now. Another one of these snake-like humanoids shouted out. Broly grinning pointed at him and gestured with his finger to come at him. Come, try your luck. Let's see how this will go for you. Hee <laughs> hee, although Broly was laughing, his eyes didn't show any kindness or goodwill. The temperature seemed to drop drastically for those goons. They knew that Exauja's forces were somewhat formidable from the news cooler's force conveyed, but many were not convinced that they would amount to anything in their territory. They thought the people in the Milky Way galaxy were inferior to them, but they still didn't want to attack rashly. Their superiors had told them to not engage them needlessly, which made them a bit apprehensive. Instead, they tried to intimidate Broly off this planet. Of course, they didn't know with whom they were dealing with. A moment of silence suffused the surroundings until a whooshing sound appeared from beneath them. They looked down and saw a bull-like figure approach them fast. Commander! The goons called out before chuckling like fools that had finally found their backup. The commander snorted at their shout. You idiots! Are you messing around again? He saw the symbol on the ship on the side, which made him frown a bit. Since someone with a higher rank had shown up, I don't need you anymore. Broly said to the goons and waved his arms like he was swatting away a fly. If you do you think yo dash, before one of them could finish his sentence, his body like the rest split apart in numerous sections. Afterwards their bodies seemed to explode, incinerating the pieces of body that scattered in the air. The bull-like commander widened his eyes in shock. He didn't even notice how he attacked. This is bad. He immediately came to the decisions to flee. Although he was confident in his abilities, he knew that he would be no match for this person. He tried to flee, but he couldn't move at all. It was like an invisible force had surrounded his body. Suddenly, a shadow covered his face and a hand started gripped his head. An increasing pressure appeared on his head, like something would crush his skull in the next moment. I need some information, and you are going to tell me everything I want to know. Broly saw the fear in the bull's eyes, but the bull couldn't say anything. He was solidified. He could only beg with his eyes. He, don't worry. This will only be unbearably painful. Broly sat in his spaceship again, further away from the binary star system. He looked through the window at the two distant stars and the planets surrounding it, before disappearing. He emerged again, not far from the planet he was a few hours ago. He looked down and saw countless little beings moving around in panic like ants. He pointed his finger upwards. A green flame-like sphere started growing above his finger. It started growing until it reached 30 meters across. The sphere then started to become smaller again, condensing into a much smaller version of itself until it reached that of a pearl. What can I say? I would love to start this vengeance with a bang. After saying that, he pointed his finger at the planet. The pearl shot through the air. Broly quickly disappeared, only to arrive at his spaceship again. 
just in time to see a grand explosion on the planet. The whole planet was quickly consumed by the explosion, but it didn't stop there. The explosion expanded rapidly, the shockwave pushed the other planets in the system out of their orbit. Some started breaking under the tremendous force. The two stars in the system were affected as well. One of them started drifting towards the other. It didn't take long until the two collided and brightened up the whole system, destroying everything in the near surroundings. Broly could feel the massive amount of energy the two stars were giving off as he fended it off to protect his ship. He looked at the massive explosion which devastated every planet in front of him. He now somewhat understood why Frisia enjoyed this firework. It was indeed a beautiful sight. He easily destroyed a planet and steered the whole star system into chaos with a simple attack of his that didn't even take him 10 seconds to make. That was also a reason why he focused so arduously to master his control. Sure, a casual punch of his could easily destroy a mountain or worse, but the more he was able to concentrate this power into a single point, the more harmful it would be against his opponents. That was especially true in his higher forms, which was also reason why he wished for the necklace to help suppress most of his power. He set course to another planet where another camp of Mamba was. It would take a few days, so without further thought he went inside his training room. He wanted to use the time to get used to his ascended legendary state. He didn't know how strong Mamba was, but Broly wouldn't underestimate him. He wanted to be in top form when he meets him until then he would carry out his vendetta by demolishing and killing every camp and subordinate he came across. Besides this was a good way to kill some time until the androids attacked. My my lord. Another camp in the west quadrant was destroyed. This is the 42nd location we have placed on different planets. We are only left with seven camps near the center. Muos has already become braver and tried to annex a few of the planets. Exauja's force had conquered. But they seem to have suffered severe losses as well against them. Clink. A glass fell to the ground and shattered as toxic green liquid started to flow out and corrode the ground. Bang. A tail smashed on the ground, immediately cracking the ground. What are our losses? In the west and north side, only 10% survived while we lost all our planets to them. We we lost everyone where he showed up. He had blown up the planets as usual. That fool. He gains nothing if he simply eradicates everyone and everything. It is not profitable. Unless, mm, maybe he is after reputation? He is a newcomer after all. My lord. Maybe we should see Cooler the Frost Demon. We have a common enemy after all. The Lord stood in front of a window facing into the seemingly empty space. The Lord had a tall and muscular upper body with razor-sharp claws on his long arms. His upper body ended in a long snake-like tail. Most prominent that was even noticeable from behind was the wide neck. The Lord turned around looking at his subordinate who was gulping after seeing the neon green eyes of his Lord. It seemed like the mere gaze would be toxic. His tongue would slither out from time to time. The Lord looked like a King Cobra with a somewhat human upper body. Ally myself with Cooler? Humph, it is obvious that the two are working together. Working together? But I thought they were nemesis, which was why they chased each other even till here. Do I only have dumbass as subordinates? The subordinate shivered after hearing the question. They have never truly fought. With this, they had an excuse to expand their territory. Only now that Exauja's king was attacked, they suddenly show their fangs. Even if they weren't working together, I don't know anything more in death about Cooler. It would be foolish of me to work with him. Humph, they think because they are somewhat formidable they can just mess around. Even their king has moved out personally. What a fool. Who sends their leader to the front lines? Hiss. As Mamba hissed and sprayed a bright green liquid on the ground, quickly destroying the reinforced metal ground. I will make you regret for your actions. His face distorted in anger before relaxing again showing a cold, calculating smile. Deep in the Andromeda galaxy a ship was steadily flying through the empty space. Inside where for people standing behind a sitting figure who looked at the report they two teams had gathered. These were of course Broly and the other S-Fighters. Everything points to planet CB-232, being their headquarters and where Mamba is currently residing. For almost a month, no news about anything indicating his current position and suddenly numerous signs pointing at this planet. I don't even think someone like him would choose a stationary location as his residence. Considering how careful he is, it wouldn't surprise me if there are only a handful that knows his location while he is moving all around. King Broly, we have to conclude our vendetta soon. The other forces in this galaxy become more anxious the longer we stay. We have seen an increased number of their forces where we were operating. And I mean both sides of this galaxy. Aaliyah added. 
They have somewhat tolerated their invasion as attempt on the Scion King's life was made, but after Broly was going around destroying entire planets or even solar systems, they became more displeased. After all, every planet was a potential trading route, even if it was owned by a murderous king. At least he had put some value to those planets. To begin with there aren't many planets in a galaxy, which conditions were suitable for beings to be on. They couldn't tolerate his behavior, be it criminal or righteous organizations. The only thing that they overestimated was the care Broly would give to their threats. The average Scion was able to swagger around in this galaxy even without Broly's or another Super Scion's support. Even two mercenary goons in the upper 90s on the ranking list were easily disposed off by Broly. He couldn't care less about the opinion of some weaklings, but he was on time pressure as well. There wasn't much time until the androids attacked and Broly wanted a first seat on these events. We won't change anything. We will work them off like we planned it. Since there are only a few planets left, they have probably placed some traps on all of them. It doesn't matter which planet we attack by now, we will just do according to our terms. Oh, and before you land on the planets, just try to blow them up immediately. You don't enter, just carry out attacks from the distance. If there is more resistance than expected, report it to me without delay. Understood. Short afterwards, the four left and headed towards their respective planet in teams of two. Broly stroke his chin. He couldn't help but feel somewhat threatened by the incoming battle, which in turn only made him more excited. In the near center of the Andromeda galaxy, a red bull-like humanoid was sitting on a table with two other individuals besides Mamba. He listened to the cobra to the side with his arms crossed. He had a golden nose ring and his face as well as his whole muscle-bulging body was covered in scars. His name was Angus and seemed to be on the verge of flipping the table. On another chair was a slim black-bluish octopus with two dark yellow eyes. From time to time it would throw in some remarks seemingly telepathic as it didn't seem to have a mouth to speak from. The octopus was named Crake and was releasing a special pressure that made one uncomfortable just by being in the same room. Weaker wild individuals would most likely lose their minds. The last one was a blue figure which seemed to be entirely made out of lightning. It cruised through the whole body and every time he spoke it was accompanied by a thunder. Everything he touched would start smoking shortly after. It didn't seem like it had its own powerfully under control. He was Muos. They all had different powers and were from a different race. They had known each other for a very long time. But this didn't mean that they were any closer of being friends. The opposite was true. These four were the current rulers of the underground. The emperors of the Andromeda galaxy. They were the ones that wanted to be at each other's throats like no one else. But a new threat had wandered inside their territory and destroyed the balance. Although they were happy to see Mamba's influence decline, they couldn't accept someone that would act without care. This would doom not only Mamba's but their business as well. Broly was like a crazy person not even one of the worst criminals wanted to deal with. But now that he had come here to mess around, they couldn't just ignore his existence. His feats already spoke for themselves. Although everyone here were formidable beings, they wouldn't want to take this opponent lightly. Their long life had made them cautious of beings with weird abilities. It was obvious that this mad King Broly had showed off a small part of his powers already, making the other side more cautious. They thought it was to provoke them or intimidate him, and to some degree it worked. Not out of fear, but they wanted to make the next battle a sure kill. They have lived for many years and knew to make compromises under this new threat. In the first time in history of their reign, these four emperors made an alliance to fend off a greater evil than themselves. They discussed for a while, or rather, Mamba explained his plan to them on their next move. This sounds rather simple? Angus frowned as he said that. He was one who simply used his physical strength to reign supreme, but even he knew that the proposed plan sounded a bit too simple. Humph. <laughs> the simpler, the less something can go wrong. Just follow the plan. After a few days passed, Broly and his crew had eliminated the last seven encampments of Mamba's force. Only Mamba's so-called headquarters remained. It was a planet very close to the center of the Andromeda galaxy. They were only a few hours away from the planet. They sat in their spaceship looking through the window at the planet. The other 40 elites were already brought back to Exausia. In the incoming fight, they would only be a distraction. This wasn't something they could participate in. After meditating a bit, getting into top form, they parked their spaceship in another solar system. Afterwards, they teleported to a few hundred kilometers away from the planet. As soon as they did, they were able to see movement on the planet's surface. It didn't take long for a few hundred aliens of different races to approach Broly's group. They didn't hesitate and released several key blasts. 
It was clear that the group which approached them were the very elites of Mamba, but in front of the powerhouses of Exausia, they were only considered slightly bigger ants. A few seconds was all the time they needed to wipe them out, not waiting for them to start attacking the planet. Three figures surrounded in domineering auras shot towards them. Broly squinted his eyes as he looked at the figures that were flying towards them. The figure among the trio that attracted his attention first was of course Mamba. A humanoid cobra, he wasn't easily confused with someone else, especially with the key he was leaking. Two others were on his side, seemingly of equal standings. Broly looked at the two, a red bull and a being made out of lightning. Since they seemed of equal standings as Mamba, he associated them with the two ranked beings that reigned in this galaxy as well. Muo's Emperor of Lightning ranked 49 and Angus, the Mad Bull, ranked 59. He instantly assigned the others to take on the bull. He wasn't sure if they were able to handle Mamba, not even considering the even stronger Muos. He only needed them to delay him for a bit until he had eradicated the other two. Instead of instantly attacking, the trio started hovering in space in front of them. You have finally come, Exausia's Lord, King Broly, Mamba said while slightly hissing. He didn't hide his anger and disdain for Broly. Did you write your will? Broly said mockingly. Humph. It was a terrible mistake to mess with my empire. I will make you suffer. Mamba suddenly charged out with Maus and Angus in tow. Without hesitation, Aaliyah, Kana and Taro transformed into Ascended Super Scions while Zhongya transformed into her full power state as well. Broly's eyes started changing into a yellow color as he used his Akari transformation. Golden and green lights brightened the dark space on one side, while blue, green and red lights shone on the other side. The three emperors were slightly surprised by the huge increase of their strength. This wasn't a level many beings in the entire universe could reach. No matter what, they were still more than confident enough to deal with them. Broly's crew instantly intercepted Angus, pushing him out of the range of Broly and the other two. Angus straight up rushed at Zhongya and punched out. A domineering pressure came along with his punch, as it seemed to be able to crush anything. Zhongya narrowly escaped the attack by teleporting behind Angus, but the punch's power seemed to press forwards as it headed to Taro a few hundred meters away. Taro instantly released tremendous key forming it into a key barrier surrounding his body, while Kana and Aaliyah gathered key in their hands. On impact Taro's body was slightly pushed backwards but he had sustained no injuries. Aaliyah and Kana finished building up their attacks. As soon as they did, they released their attack at the same time. In an instant, the key waves reached Angus who only snorted after seeing the attacks. Their attacks immediately exploded on impact, completely enveloping Angus' body. They weren't able to see him at all. They waited until the explosion cleared to see how much damage that attack had dealt. The explosion cleared and a five-meter-tall bull with bulging muscles hovered silently in space as he looked at them with a mocking expression. Veins all over decorated his body. His strength seemed to have increased a couple of times and he didn't have a single injury on him. Your pathetic attacks can't even scratch me, let alone injure me. He looked at them intimidatingly, but he only received smiles and even sighs of relief as response. A vein on his forehead started appearing as he looked at them with rage. What are you smirking about? I will crush and grind your bones to dust. Angus dashed out and quickly arrived in front of Taro. He chopped down right at Taro's head. If that attack hit, Taro wouldn't only receive a small injury. Taro didn't panic as he evaded the attack by slightly moving out of place and released dozens of counterattacks in an instant. A giant with an incredible high defense and high attack power? Nothing new. But you're even slower than him by a long shot. You clump of muscles, Taro taunted. But he didn't continue his attack as he dodged the arm swipe from Angus. In the next moment Angus was bombarded with attacks from the distance. Before he was hit, Pulse-like key waves blocked the incoming attacks, neutralizing any damage it would have done. Although he had a high defense, even weaker attacks would accumulate damage on his body over time. He wanted to quickly rush out and crush one to ease the pressure but before he could move out again, Aaliyah appeared behind him and gave a hard kick to his back head. It only slightly nudged forwards. Angus quickly reached out for the leg but couldn't catch it in time as Aaliyah sprung backwards. Seamless, key waves headed at Angus but this time he brazed through the attacks. His hand thrusted out of the explosion and reached out for Aaliyah, but she fired a key blast, pushing herself far away. You bunch of flies, if I get you in my hands, I will crush you. The others didn't even respond as they proceeded to mix up ranged with close attacks. While the others were slowly whittling away Angus' power, Broly was pushed back by the two emperors. 
Mao's was incredibly fast. Although the attacks didn't do much damage, his lighting had a numbing effect on the spot it hit. On the other hand, Mamba's body had a natural toxic component to it. If Broly touched his skin, he felt how his cells were slowly being destroyed. Even his key waves were mixed with magic and seemed to have a toxic or corroding feature to it as well. Broly didn't want to block his attack with his body. An incredible fast opponent and toxic attacks were reasons why he was pushed slightly backwards. But he didn't want to show all his cards yet as he tried to gauge their full strength. Broly dodged over a tail sweep from Mamba and a lightning fist shot right at his face. Broly opened his mouth wide and in an instant a key sphere appeared before bursting open in a bright light beam. Mao's instantly tried to dodge the attack from point blank. Although he was fast, he was still grazed by it. A piece of his lightning shoulder was ripped out, but it was quickly regenerated and reformed with more lightning. While Broly attacked, Mamba slithered towards Broly with his fangs out. He aimed straight at his neck, but only a dozen centimeter away. Broly tilted his body slightly forwards and to the side, while striking Mamba with his elbow. The elbow tip directly hit Mamba's nose and cut his face. Mamba was pushed backwards and Mao's quickly arrived next to him. Mamba's face grimaced as he still couldn't gain an advantage against Broly even with Mao's in tow. Mamba's body suddenly leaked a tremendous amount of power. His 10-meter long body started shining in a white light before disappearing as quickly as it appeared. Mamba had transformed into a humanoid being with two legs and arms. His hands still had sharp claws and his new feet had them as well. His whole body was covered in dark green scales with black spots on it. He had shrunk to 2.5 meters height and was releasing a scary power. It was like his mere presence would corrode one's body. Mao's on the side wasn't inactive as his body's lightning changed from his light blue to a bright blood red. His body was giving off dangerous wipes. Anyone would feel like a calamity was about to descend on them when they saw Mao's. You actually pushed us this far? Be proud to die after seeing this. Mamba hissed out as he mockingly pointed at Broly. You took the words right out of my mouth. Broly sneered as his body was rapidly increasing in size, only stopping after his frame reached 3 meters. His body was giving off an overbearing pressure that descended on anything near him. Broly released an aura which triggered the primal fear of a predator in the two emperors. Mamba gritted his teeth and shook his head to get rid of this feeling. In the next moment he dashed out again. Mamba dashed out and in just a blink of an eye, he appeared in front of Broly and slashed at Broly's throat. The space seemed to tear apart. The claw created dark green light beams as it immediately appeared at Broly's throat. Broly only smirked as he slightly leaned back for a few centimeters, effectively evading the attack. As Broly evaded, his arm stabbed at Mamba's side. Just as his attack was about to reach him, a red light intercepted his attack, slowing him down for just a moment, but long enough for Mamba to retreat. Broly looked at Mao's who had his hands stretched out, his fingers pointing at Broly. Mao's didn't wait for Broly as his fingers started glowing in an intense red until five beams shot out. Broly flew to the side and easily evaded the attacks. What Broly didn't expect was that the beams were following him closely as Mao's followed him with his palm. They were fast and as they pursued him, Broly turned around, facing the closely following beams. He stretched out his palms prepared to shoot key blast at the approaching beams as he flew backwards. He already noticed that Mamba was approaching him from the back. A second later, just as Mamba was about to slash out, Broly stopped and shot several key blasts at the beams. Before they collided with the beams, they exploded. A giant explosion was created and enveloped Broly, who quickly dashed inside the explosion. Mamba was about to head inside as well. Just as he was about to enter the explosion, five red beams shot out of the explosion. They were too fast for Mamba to dodge at this close range. He brought his arms in front of his body, blocking the beams. Five holes appeared in his arms. Mamba was bleeding green blood. His face distorted as he shot a glance at Mao's, who only frowned slightly. They waited for the explosion to clear. After a while, everything cleared but no figure was in sight. Arg! Mao's body shot out and headed towards a planet not far away. He quickly stopped before he reached the planet. A green hole was burned in his abdomen. He wanted to heal but he realized that the green energy that lingered at the wound slowed down the process and raised the expenditure of energy to heal. He seemed to notice something. He quickly looked up and saw a fast approaching figure not even 100 meters away. The wound slowed him down. Without being able to react, a fist landed straight in his face. He was shot away right at the planet. Like a meteor, 
he pulverized a small mountain and created a giant crater on the ground. Broly didn't follow up as he looked at the planet with a smirk. Mamba suddenly appeared behind him and chopped down, right at Broly's head. Broly took a step back and reached out with his arms, catching Mamba's arm. Broly bent forwards as he threw Mamba over his head. Mamba quickly hurled at the planet but quickly regained his balance. Mamba stopped and looked upwards at the hovering Broly, but the only thing he saw was a key sphere. The key sphere exploded right in his face and launched Mamba out of the sky to the ground, creating a crater as well. Broly calmly landed on the ground as he looked at the two craters. He saw the two figures move trying to get up. Without waiting for them to get up, Broly jumped up and shot to the ground again. He heavily landed on Mao's back. Mao's back was bent on impact. He looked like he was about to snap in half any moment. Broly jumped and shot to the ground again. Mao's quickly fled after feeling Broly get off his back. But this time he wasn't the target. Mamba was supporting himself with his hands. Just as he was about to stand up, he felt a brunt force knocking his face into the ground. Broly jumped away again and hovered in the air. Broly looked at the giant crater he created with Mamba's face. He slightly tilted his head to the sides, several times as beams shot past his head. This time they didn't follow him as they destroyed mountains in the back. Broly looked back at Mao's whose lights seemed to have dimmed by quite a bit. Broly grinned as he raised his arm. Mao's lightning flickered. In the next moment Mao's started fleeing into the sky. Green light beams followed him. He tried to shake them off but like his attack, they pursued him relentlessly. Unlike him however, Broly didn't need to concentrate a whole lot to do this. Broly looked back at the hole which started to shine in a dark green light. A figure stormed outside of the hole. Mamba's appearance had slightly changed. He became smaller again, reaching a height of two meters, and was now completely dark green. But what stood out was long claws that dripped green liquid. The drops instantly corroded the ground. Mamba slashed his arms and green blade beams tore through the air. Broly's eyes constricted as he saw tiny drops filling up the gaps of the slashes. Broly dodged to the side's way out of range of this attack. Theses attacks that only had a straight flight path wouldn't be able to reach him. Without warning loud booms sounded out a few thousand kilometers away, brightening up the sky in a green hue. Broly only smirked as he dashed at Mamba again. Mamba continued to slash out but to no avail, Broly was too fast. Broly arrived in front of him and punched out, landing straight on his stomach, sending him flying. Mamba's body bounced numerous times over the ground until he crashed into a mountain, completely obliterating it. Broly frowned as he looked at his fist, seeing his energy depleting rapidly as it fought off the corrosion. Out of the mountain, Mamba's sorry figure flew out quickly escaping into space. Mamba's mouth was covered in green blood, dripping onto his chest. Mamba looked back at Broly who was grinning at him. Mamba couldn't help but shiver at the sight. What a monster! Mamba mumbled as he escaped into space. You can try to run if you want, but I'll hunt you down to the very ends of the universe. Broly's deep voice sounded out. Mamba couldn't help but tremble in fear, but he quickly calmed down as he started grinning with a mad glint in his eyes. That's what I am hoping for. This will be the end for you Broly. Mamba thought as he headed into the empty space. He was quickly followed by a black light. Mao's appeared beside Mamba who widened his eyes as he let his eyes wander over Mao's body. His whole body was filled with black lightning which exuded a sense of destruction. A few black lightnings shot out of his body which easily tore apart space. Mamba started frowning. He had never seen that form of Mao's, even though they had fought numerous times in the past. No matter what the stronger he was, the better. Mamba had already lost confidence to defeat Broly in battle, but that he didn't really care as this wasn't the plan after all. They only need to fly for another minute and then they would have reached it. Mamba and Mao's looked back and saw a green domineering aura rushing towards them. After seeing this, they quickly accelerated and blindly shot several attacks at Broly's direction. Broly didn't even bother to evade the attacks as they wouldn't hit him anyway. Broly's eyes turned yellow for a second and instantly appeared in front of Mamba. Broly's legs swung at Mamba's head. Mamba was shocked at his sudden appearance and quickly tried to shield himself. He was only narrowly able to block it, but the force was still too heavy. Crack. One of his arms broke and his other was numb from the impact. He was launched back. Mao's didn't stop to help him but continued to flee, but Broly didn't have any of it. He quickly pursued him, but he was surprised that Mao's was able to accelerate even further. 
Broly stacked Ikari again on his legendary state, but even with this he wasn't able to catch up on him. In high-speed pursuit, Mao suddenly disappeared and Broly looked shocked as he tried to stop, but a force seemed to strongly pull him closer to the spot Mao's disappeared just a moment ago. Broly's figure struggled to get away as he turned around and his key flared up. Strangely, three figures started to materialize a few thousand kilometers away, watching Broly struggle amusedly. Mamba wiped away the blood on his mouth with his still intact arm and started speaking. Broly, even with your might, you won't be able to escape this massive black hole. Ha ha ha. This is the end of your short reign. King Broly. Mamba raised his arm and shot out a key blast straight at Broly. Mamba shot his key blast directly at Broly's face, exploding immediately on impact. Broly was pushed back slightly. Broly's key started rising as he pushed against the gravitational pull. Without waiting any longer, Mao sent lightning at Broly's direction. A storm of attacks pushed him back until his body was ripped into pieces from his toes upwards. With a deafening scream, his body disappeared in the black hole. Ha 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 ha, that's what you get with messing with me. Mamba shouted at the black hole. There is something wrong, Craig said out with doubt in his voice. Craig, what do you may a dash? Did you really think that was going to work? A deep voice suddenly boomed behind them. The three froze for a second. The voice sent shivers down their spine. They felt like Death himself was speaking to them, while his scythe hovered behind their heads. Craig was the first to recover as he turned around. His dark yellow eyes opened wide as he looked at the monster behind them. Broly looked at them amusedly. I have to say it was not a bad idea to create illusions and lure me into a black hole. But I have to disappoint you, my vision is not something you can deceive. This is impossible. I, I saw how you were pulled into the black hole. Craig was agitated and backed away a little. Broly grinned. You aren't the only one that can pull off an illusion and after seeing how you used it so blatantly, I couldn't help but mess with you. He, Craig raised his tentacles and his whole body slightly glowed blue. The space around Broly started solidifying, trying to restrict his movements. Broly couldn't help but snort. You are just another bug I am going to squish now. Broly waved his arm, tearing apart the space imprisonment. Craig seemed to experience a backlash as his body bent forwards as if he was going to puke any moment. ha -ia. A desperate scream came out of Mamba as he dashed at Broly, immediately slashing out. He swung his arm and looked madly at Broly who only mockingly stared at him. Mamba's expression froze as a sharp pain came from his arm. He looked at his arm and saw nothing. His complete arm till the shoulder was gone. How dash, before he could say anything, pain filled his stomach. He slowly looked down. His face became hideous as he saw his own arm penetrating his stomach. Broly's arm let go of Mamba's arm. Mamba followed Broly's arm and looked at Broly's face only to see bright yellow eyes staring back. Cough. Cough. I won't dash, Mamba coughed out blood. His pale expression was distorted in pain as he felt his own innards corroding. He pulled out his own arm. With a giant hole in his stomach, he retreated quickly. He was deathly pale, but it didn't seem like he was giving up. The others had a frightened expression on their faces as well. Craig was already backing away by a lot. He seemed like he would ditch as soon as an opportunity presented itself. Playtime is over, Broly calmly said before disappearing from their sight. Craig watch out. Mao screamed as he turned towards the octopus, but his warning came too late. Broly grabbed two tentacles on both sides and pulled hard, directly ripping them off. Blue blood started spewing out of his stumps but before he could retaliate, Broly kicked him away. Mao's knew that he had to give his all if he wanted to survive and kill this monster. Black lightning suddenly lashed out of his body as the lightnings became thicker and seemingly more solid. He waved his arms and whip of lightning slashed at Broly who only raised his arms. The whip wrapped around his arm. Mao's tried to pull the whip but it wouldn't move at all. Attack him now. We have T-Dash. His mouth automatically stopped after he saw how a grin formed on Broly's face. Just as he was about to release his whip, Broly pulled hard. Mao's shot through space straight at Broly. In an instant Mao's arrived and was directly sent flying again. The whip couldn't hold Mao's back as it snapped under the pressure. Broly looked at his arm and saw light burning marks, which quickly healed under his manipulation of life force. Broly disappeared from sight for a moment before reappearing, effectively evading the beams of lights coming from behind. He looked back at the miserable figure of Mamba, who was breathing heavily. Broly didn't bother with him as he saw that Mouse fled. 
he teleported in front of him and punched him towards Mamba, who evaded Mao's body before giving him a harsh look. The trio instantly understood after feeling how he used space to teleport. If they didn't stick together, not only wouldn't they escape, but their chances of survival would drastically shrink. Although their chance of survival at this point was minuscule, it was higher than if they tried to escape and have him kill them off one by one. Without thinking further, Crake waved his numerous tentacles, who released a storm of blue blades made out of magic and mental energy. These blades would attack Broly's body and his soul at the same time. Broly silently released a green sphere around him, blocking every blade coming at him. Crake didn't stop as he relentlessly shot out these blades. Mao's and Mamba weren't inactive. They released waves of attacks at the same time. They surrounded him as they bombarded Broly with attacks, completely drowning Broly under their attacks. Explosion after explosion filled the area between the three. This went on for minutes until they stopped. Their body trembled heavily after the high energy expenditure. They tried to recover as much power as they could. They knew that their attacks wouldn't be able to kill him. Wahahaha! Insects, the lot of you! Broly's voice rang out and with it a green light tore through the explosions, dispersing them in an instant. Broly's body was completely enveloped with his flame-like key. Their minds were already on the verge of breaking as they didn't expect Broly to completely unharmed. After their failed trap, Broly reappeared with yellow eyes. His power was now far too much for the three to handle. Was that your best? They were already despairing. In a last attempt, they all raised their arms and channeled their energy to shoot out their strongest attacks. Mao's arms fused with each and all the lightning in his body headed towards his arm. Craig's whole body was enveloped with blue energy and became brighter with every moment until he shined brightly and space around him warped. Mamba opened his mouth frighteningly wide, while his fangs started glowing green. His fangs connected with green energy threads in front of his mouth, forming a green blinking horn. Lightning cannon. Space cut. Basilisk horn. Three dazzling attacks that filled the empty space with bountiful and destructive energy headed straight at Broly. The target of these planet-shattering attacks squinted slightly. A black lightning beam. A blade that separated space and a green shining horn shot at Broly. Broly's grin had already disappeared and became solemn, facing the attacks. An instant later his body shrunk, and his hair stood on ends. Lightning covered his body, as he outstretched his arms. Ha! A solid green sphere surrounded his body and blocked the attacks at the last moment. The attacks pressed against the sphere from all sides. The sphere protecting Broly not only didn't cave in but slowly pushed the attacks away. Slowly the energy and destructiveness in the attacks of the three emperors was slowly lost and faded away. The sphere was still expanding until the resistance became nil. No cracks or even scratches could be found on its surface. The sphere faded and revealed Broly who was frowning slightly as he looked at the completely exhausted trio. I guess I have nothing more to see. Broly raised his arms slowly with his palms up. Spears of green lightning appeared all around him. Hundreds of spears pointed at the exhausted three. They stared at the spears in front of them and became deathly pale. There was no escaping this. Haha. <laughs> oh man, when will he collapse? We are almost fighting a whole hour already. Taro complained as he looked at the bull in the middle. Taro's arm was bloody, and blood was dripping out at the corner of his mouth. Zongya wasn't in any better shape, her leg was bloody and was slightly twisted at a weird angle. Aliyah and Kana were holding on much better, except for numerous cuts and bruises, they didn't seem to have sustained any heavy injuries. Hopefully soon. Our healing capsules are running out, Zongya answered as she threw one capsule inside her mouth. She adjusted her leg back to its normal position and the wounds started closing shortly after. Taro popped in a capsule as well. Although they were talking and recovering, they didn't take of their focus off Angus. Angus saw how the two leisurely healed again like many times before. Just as he was about to attack them, he was blocked by Kana. He was coming nearer to his limits. Even with his monstrous defense and endurance, he wouldn't be able to out-endure his enemies, especially if they healed after getting serious injuries. Although his situation looked hopeless, he knew as soon as the others came back, they would slaughter these annoying bastards. Angus was covered in blood, there wasn't any area that wasn't covered in scratches, but this was all they were, scratches. The wounds had accumulated, making him fatigue, but no wound was life-threatening. He mostly defended against his enemies as they were too fast to catch, but that didn't mean he was okay watching them heal. 
He had already attacked them countless times and many times did it seem like the weaker two would be dying soon until he was intercepted by Aaliyah and Kana. Now it was the same, but this time he reacted to their blocking and struck right behind him. They would usually distract him with one in the front, but this time he was determined to not let this chance go. He struck behind him and felt his hit connect. Without hesitation, he turned around and quickly grabbed Aaliyah who was still dazed from the attack. New. Angus smiled maliciously as he ignored the desperate scream from behind. He would sustain a larger wound if he didn't focus on his defense, but he needed to kill one, at least then the burden in this fight would lessen by a lot. It would make his weight endurable. He didn't say anything unnecessary and started crushing Aaliyah in his hand. He felt her resistance but in front of his strength, he was able to crush her in seconds. He felt the bones break under his squeeze as he enjoyed the agonizing screams. Aaliyah started puking out blood as her resistance lessened. Angus' eyes were glinting with satisfaction. Suddenly, a yellow flash passed in front of his eyes. It only took an instant, but as soon as it passed, his arms were assaulted with intense pain. In the next moment, his vision was filled with blood as it spewed out of arms. He raised his arms and saw how cleanly cut off they were. His hands were still wrapped around the now unconscious Aaliyah. Blood was gushing out of his arm stumps. He suddenly heard a weird sound he had ignored a moment ago, approaching him fast. Angus turned his head and saw how a key disc directly headed at him. He had no time to dodge, so he desperately increased his energy output in hope to block the attack that had cost him his two arms. But his reaction was too slow. The disc instantly appeared at his neck and cleanly cut through. Impose, without finishing, Angus' head separated from his body, drifting in the empty space. Kana didn't bother with the body as she quickly flew towards Aaliyah. Kana immediately threw a healing capsule inside Aaliyah's mouth, forcing her to swallow it. A couple of moments later Aaliyah's eyes trembled and slowly opened. She still looked deathly pale and exhausted. Kana then teleported her towards the spaceship to rest. Zongya wanted to follow but saw how Taro turned the body into dust before collecting Angus' head. What are doing with this? Zongya said frowning as she pointed at the head. HM? Oh, Broly once said that he couldn't wait to collect Mamba's head. Maybe he wants this head as well. I don't think he didn't mean it literally. It was just a dash. You know what? That's so considerate of you. He will like it. Zongya said sarcastically as she threw her arms up. She was about to teleport before seeing someone materialize in front of them. Broly stood tall. He looked at them with a satisfied smile on his face. Oh, you done already? The others are already in ship, huh? Yeah. Aaliyah was injured pretty badly while we ambushed this dumb bull. Is she okay? Yeah. She already took in a healing capsule and only needs rest. That's good then. By the way, what is in that bag? Zongya asked as she looked at the bag hung over Broly's shoulder. You mean this? These are their heads. Broly said as he opened the bag and showed the contents of the bag to Zongya like a trophy he just won. Broly, I got that bull's head as well. I think you want it as well, Taro exclaimed as he threw the head to Broly, who caught it and put it in his bag. Nice thanks. Unbelievable. That's so messed up. Zongya shook her head before disappearing. Broly and Taro looked at each other before shrugging and disappeared as well. Broly put his bag, he created with magic, inside a machine before checking up on Aaliyah, who looked extremely exhausted. Broly ordered the robotic maids on the ship to quickly prepare a feast for the five. After this fight, they were extremely tired but mostly hungry. The robots constantly came with new food as the Scions devoured the food as quickly as it came. Even Zongya seemed to unleash her inner Scion as she practically jumped at the food. Only after two hours of constantly eating until their bellies threatened to burst did they stop. Afterwards they slept for a day until they returned to Exausia, where they were welcomed by another big feast for their victory. Although Broly didn't confirm that they won beforehand, the Scions were completely confident in their king. While Broly was taking the next days leisurely on Exausia with his wives, he had sent his soldiers to the Andromeda Galaxy, where they would take over the remaining forces of the now dead four emperors. Cooler, on the other hand, was pushed out the Andromeda Galaxy. Broly had sent Cooler to a faraway galaxy, where he would expand his empire. Many days passed. Broly had put on his battle suit and gathered with Taro and Aes in his training room. Taro was excited to finally go to Earth. Even Aes was looking forward to seeing Jain's youngest son. In the next moment, the three of them disappeared silently from Exausia only to appear light years away on planet Earth. Broly knew that it was about time for the androids to attack and for Cell to come, 
That was also why he took these two with him. He first wanted to take Zhang Yao with him as well, but she was close to another breakthrough so he just let her train in peace. Taro and A's were weaker than the girls and would certainly accept the little challenge which will welcome them on Earth. According to the strength the Z fighters had shown in the series, even Gohan as an ascended super scion would hardly able to take these two on, but that was also why he was excited to come back. He wanted to see how much in power they increased with the extra pressure from him. They also had Jain and Raditz who have already told them on how to reach the next level. Maybe the android will be destroyed before they could even be absorbed by Cell. Broly took in a deep breath after appearing high in the sky. I am back. He mumbled as he sensed a couple of strong signatures in the distance. Apparently the fight had already started. Without hesitation, he headed there in lightning speed. That's right my friend. Let me ask you. Does a machine like yourself ever experience fear? Vegeta's body increasingly released ki that drew in the clouds until the energy burst out, destroying the near periphery. A crater was formed around Vegeta. He slowly stepped outside with his hair glowing in a golden hue. He slowly walked towards Android 19 while holding his monologue about how a low-class scion had achieved something he couldn't. He talked about how he trained and his struggles to become a super scion. Android 19 and Drive Jero seemed to be surprised by this discovery. Broly listened to his speech while Aes and Taro were bored. They only asked themselves why Broly was so interested in the former prince, who was struggling to become a super scion. It was true that there were only five super scions on Exausia at the moment, but they had many good seeds who would join their ranks sooner or later. After I have defeated Broly and his henchmen, I will be prince of all scions once again. Vegeta shouted. Taro snorted disdainful as he heard this. Hmph, <laughs> what a joke. Not even in a thousand years. Broly side glanced at Taro. You shouldn't look down on him. He had reached the level of legends after all. Yeah right, it may have been a something impossible in the past, but now? I even doubt what he is saying. He probably went to Jain on how to turn and now he is making up a nonsensical story. No, he had reached this level on his own. Even if he knew that Jain would be willing to tell him on how to turn, he would be too stubborn and prideful to ask. Then he is stupid, not knowing when to grasp opportunities. It's not like Jain would humiliate him. Yes, he may become stronger when he asks for guidance, but his very pride is his source of strength. He will reach great heights in the future. Taro frowned as he looked at Broly. He really didn't understand why he defended him. Broly didn't even put Aaliyah, the strongest scion besides Broly, into his eyes. Now the former prince, someone who had barely reached Super Scion, had caught his attention. Whatever. Taro crossed his arms as he looked down at the fight between Vegeta and Android 19. It didn't take long until Vegeta completely obliterated his opponent. Broly knew what Taro was thinking, but how would Taro know that these were his childhood heroes? What height they would reach in the future? He didn't bother with him anymore and continued observing the scene. The destruction of Android 19 resulted in Drive Jero fleeing from the group, but Vegeta didn't follow up immediately. He first ordered Krillin to give him a Senzu Bean. HM? That is. Aes suddenly caught onto the Senzu Bean as it immediately recharged the exhausted Vegeta. A Senzu Bean, like our healing capsules only a bit more instantaneously. Aes rubbed his chin as he heard this. He pondered for a moment before opening his mouth to speak again. Should we dash, don't bother with it. The yield of these beans is far too low to become useful to our empire. Stick to the healing capsules. Broly interrupted, guessing A's thoughts. All right, let's follow them and keep check to not release your energy. Since they got here, the Z fighters weren't able to locate them. That was because they already had trained their control of key to not leak out when performing actions that didn't require high expenditure. Broly, on the other hand, had difficulties in doing the same as his key was harder to control than theirs. Instead, he used magic to fly. He was able to reach far greater speed than the other two, even if it was wasteful considering the amount he needed to reach this speed. Just as Broly was about to head off after them, he noticed someone heading towards their direction at an incredible fast rate. Broly turned his head and looked into the far distance and saw how Kakarot was heading towards them. Goku's eyes locked with Broly's. Goku was surprised for a second before it was replaced by a solemn expression as he increased his speed. I guess we get some company. Hmm. Aes and Taro looked at the fast approaching key signature. This is Kakarot? Giant son? Yes, indeed. Broly's corners of his lips curved upwards as he looked at the imposing aura Kakarot was giving off. Shouldn't he be miserable right now? Suffering from the heart virus and all? Even if he didn't, why is he only coming now? 
Perhaps he already suffered from it and is already cured now. It didn't take long for Kakarot to arrive. He silently stared at the three, before his eyes wandered over the destruction on the ground and then into the distance where the Z-Fighters disappeared to. This surprised Broly as they suppressed their key. He himself would only be able to sense them by their life force. Hey Kakarot, long time no see. Good to see you healthy, Broly said to him with a grin on his face. His concern didn't come off as sincere at all. Suddenly, two figures approached from the same direction Kakarot came. They quickly arrived and hovered slightly behind Kakarot as they looked at Broly's small group. These two were Raditz and Jain. Ah, I see a family trip. A picnic. Maybe? Kakarot frowned, listening to Broly's mocking tone. My name is Goku for you and I believe you are a few years too early. Goku said while putting all his attention on Broly. He didn't even bother with the other two as he knew the greatest threat now is Broly himself. Hehe. <laughs> Don't worry, I keep my words. I am only sightseeing, showing my subordinates this beautiful planet. After all, it won't exist for long, now will it? Goku was only gritting his teeth, which surprised Broly as he assumed that he would rush head first in. Seems like with his mother around, he matured. In an instant, a leg fiercely kicked against the side of Broly's head. He was pushed to the side for a few meters before he rebalanced himself. Never mind. Broly looked at Goku who had instantly transformed into a Super Scion and attacked him. Broly's group saw the apologetic expression on Raditz and Jain, before they took on a solemn one as well and headed out, rushing at A's and Taro. Broly was pleasantly surprised as he saw Jain and Raditz turn Super Scion. He had to grin as he looked at Raditz who looked like he turned Super Scion 3. Of course, the only thing different were his eyebrows. A's and Taro transformed as well and engaged Raditz and Jain, easily pushing them back. Although the other two had attained Super Saiyan, they were of course no match for A's and Taro, who were able to turn for years already. Goku quickly rushed at Broly and released dozens of attacks in a second. He pushed Broly back and struck him to the ground with both his hands intertwined. Broly didn't crash into the ground but used his arms to somersault, before landing on his feet. I have to give it to him, even with all this strength, the planet would hardly be affected by this fight. Goku didn't give him any rest and pursued him. Broly blocked and dodged all the attacks calmly. Although he was grazed from time to time and was obviously in a disadvantage, he didn't want to turn Ikari, not yet at least. Seeing how undisturbed Broly was, Goku suddenly burst out with power, directly sent a powerful punch straight at Broly's face. Broly's eyes constricted as he saw this, but in his base form he was too slow to react and could only endure the attack. The punch squarely landed on his cheek, sending him flying into a rock formation. Broly's body went right through the rocks, leaving a trail of destruction behind him. Goku was heavily panting after delivering the punch, before calming his breath shortly after. A few seconds later, his eyes focused on the figure that walked out of the dust cloud. Goku saw how Broly licked the blood coming out the corner of his mouth. Yuck! Goku exclaimed. In the next moment, his eyes widened as he looked directly into Broly's yellow eyes just a few centimeters away before feeling the brunt of the force impacting his stomach. His view turned as he was sent across the floor. He bounced for several kilometers before ramming into a giant boulder. He was deeply embedded into the stone. His body arched, but he knew that he had to be vigilante for any attacks that might come soon. Just as he was about to crawl out again, at the end of the hole, he saw Broly eyeing him with a ferocious smile on his face. Goku felt a shiver down his spine as he felt the immense power exuding out of Broly, but instead of feeling fear, he became more excited. Without hesitation, Goku jumped at Broly who watched him with curiosity. Goku seemed to punch out, but before it connected, he opened his palm, revealing a small key sphere. It exploded in Broly's face. The boulder couldn't handle the explosion and quickly crumbled. Goku quickly retreated and threw more key blasts at the figure that was walking through the dust cloud. But no matter how many blasts Goku fired, Broly didn't seem to be disturbed as he just walks through it. He didn't even bother to defend, as he just took the attacks head on. Seeing these small attacks not work, Goku steadied his stance and stretched out his arms to the front, and then pulled them to his sides as he charged up his attack. Kamehame. Broly had walked out and stood right in front of Goku waiting for his attack. He smiled haughty, as if the attack wouldn't do as much as a scratch to him. Ha! Goku directly shot out his Kamehameha wave in Broly's face at point blank. Everything behind Broly was obliterated as he just stood there like he was enjoying the breeze. A second later the attack ended in a huge explosion. 
The dust didn't even settle before an arm shot out of the dust cloud and grabbed Goku by the hair and lifted him up. Goku was striking Broly's arm with his elbow, hoping to get out of his grasp but to no avail. The dust finally settled with Broly smiling at him. What was that supposed to be? Goku? Without warning Broly struck out with his free hand, sending Goku flying parallel to the ground. Before Goku could get out of his daze from the hit, Broly appeared behind him in his flight path. Without giving Goku a chance to retaliate, Broly fiercely kicked him into the air. He felt some bones crack under his kick, but Broly didn't want to give him time to recover. He pursued him. A moment later Broly caught up, surpassed Goku and with a chop, sent him to the ground. Like a meteor, he shot to the ground but instead of a huge impact, Goku managed to deviate his flying path, making him slide across the ground. It didn't take long for him to rebalance and disappear into a rock formation. Broly didn't bother to follow him and started to fire a few key blasts, blowing the hole surrounding up until he saw a figure flying out of one of the explosions. He hovered in the air before realizing that Goku threw in a healing capsule. Yes, not a senzu bean. Using my healing capsules right in front of me? You have some guts. Broly quickly flew straight towards Goku, who finally stopped and headed back, meeting Broly mid-flight. Broly punched out and Goku evaded it barely, delivering a kick to Broly's stomach. But before Goku could follow up, Broly retracted his arm, restraining the leg. Broly squeezed, intending to break it. But Goku suddenly burst out with power again for just a moment, heavily kicking Broly's arm, but it didn't move. Goku's countenance changed. In the next moment, with a snap, Goku's leg broke. Only then let Broly let go of him. Goku fell to the ground. He quickly stood up but stumbled back, trying to avoid putting weight on his broken leg. His face grimaced in pain. He, <laughs> So, I didn't imagine things. That burst of power is not something a normal Super Saiyan can achieve. Uh, go ahead, you will need all the healing you can get. Broly opened his palm, symbolizing Goku to heal himself. Goku hesitated for a second before he threw in a healing capsule. His face changed to a normal, solemn one, devoid of pain. Ready for round two? Broly's eyes changed back to his base as he outstretched his arms to the side as if he was going for a hug. Goku frowned deeply as he saw that. Broly knew what Goku was thinking. At least now you have a chance. Broly teased him and as expected, Goku closed the distance in an instant. With a burst of power, his legs swept out like a whip, tearing through air. Broly was barely able to block the attack. He slid across the ground as he was sent backwards. His legs pierced the ground, creating two deep trenches along the way. Broly lowered his arms to take a look and saw Goku just in front of him, punching out. Broly tilted his head, avoiding the punch. Of course, Goku didn't give him any rest as he relentlessly attacked. Only in the last moments would his power suddenly accelerate. This increased the pressure on Broly as he was pushed backwards, but unlike the beginning he was barely grazed, let alone hit. Every few seconds would Goku pop in another healing capsule, quickly restoring his lost energy, before engaging Broly again with all he got. But unlike before Goku was unable to catch Broly off guard, they exchanged countless bouts. Broly got bored as he knew that Goku didn't have anything more to offer as of right now. He tilted his head, avoiding a punch before headbutting Goku squarely on his nose. Goku's nose immediately broke, and his head flung backwards. Broly's solemn face gave off a dangerous vibe as he positioned him slightly sideways as he closed in. His right arm suddenly became a blur. An instant later, he had already retracted his arm, while Goku's eyes rolled into the back of his head as he fainted. Numerous fist marks covered Goku's body. The fist marks faintly released smoke, as if his skin was burning. It took a few seconds before Goku's stiff body finally fell on the ground. Broly looked at the unconscious body of Goku. It took Aaliyah seven years to ascend the Super Saiyan transformation, but you are already tapping into it after three. If it had been a year later, you would have already accumulated enough energy to fully ascend. That was why you only boosted part of your body. This is really ingenious and possible usable with Divine Key later on. Mm. You don't mind if I steal this idea, right? I guess I will take your silence as your acknowledgement. Broly turned around and flew off. He looked at his fist before grinning. I made some progress with Kaka's fighting style. It is marvelous indeed. I was able to use every bit of energy with extreme precision in these last attacks. He looked around and saw the destruction he had caused to the surroundings. He shook his head. The destruction he caused was only because his attacks wasn't as controlled. 
If he was able to master Keiko's fighting style, there would be only fist-sized holes instead of those kilometers wide craters. Without bothering with it any longer, he disappeared into the direction of Jine and Raditz. They were going at it seemingly fiercely, but Broly could tell that it was more of a spar than a real fight. As soon as they saw his figure, they stopped. Broly told Jine and Raditz where to find Goku before he headed towards Dr. Jero's hideout with Taro and A's in tow. And how is he? Taro asked. As they were flying towards the life force, Broly had sensed. Not bad. He even caught me off guard. But his power itself leaves a lot to be desired. Nevertheless, he will be an ascended super scion soon. Taro and A's were surprised. They knew it wasn't something easy to reach that form. They themselves took over a decade to reach it. That is fast. Indeed, but it will take him years to reach your power. You should still raise your training up a notch if you want to compete with him in the future. Broly said, trying to rile them up. But only Taro seemed somewhat affected. Ace still had his neutral expression. Taro suddenly spotted something on his Broly's neck. A thin string leading down to the front under his armor. It seemed to have come out when he was fighting. Taro quickly dismissed it and just continued flying. Meanwhile, a group had gathered at a mountainside with a road along it. In a crater further down were two figures swirling around each other. One of them was forced to the ground. Vegeta stood back up and rushed at Android 18 trying to kick her away, but she merely jumped over his attack and dazed him with a kick of her own. As Vegeta stumbled a few steps, she headed back in, delivering a heavy kick to his side with his arm in between. She didn't follow up as Vegeta was stumbling and kneeled to the ground. He shouted out in pain as his arm was hanging limp on his side. It was clear that his arm broke by the attack. Broly and the others were quickly approaching the mountainside from where several key signatures came. Apparently, the Z Fighters were already fiercely fighting the androids. According to the series, the Z Fighters would be stomped into the ground by them, but Broly of course hoped that they would have increased in strength like Goku did. It didn't take them long until they finally arrived, and now Broly could now accurately tell how much they have improved. Piccolo was actually a tad bit stronger than Vegeta, but of course it wasn't enough to beat the androids. The others improved a lot as well, but Broly didn't think that they deviated much from what he saw in the series. They were quickly beaten up. Surprisingly, Krillin wasn't there but Gohan was left standing. A beautiful, slender, curvy woman with a fair complexion was approaching him. This of course was number 18. Gohan didn't wait, as his key suddenly increased tremendously. His hair started rising, and Broly thought for a second that Gohan had already become a super scion. Unfortunately, his power peaked just as he was about to transform. With a stomp on the ground, he shot towards number 18, who only smiled at the attempt. She evaded the attack and smacked Gohan into the mountainside. He instantly fainted and with him the last fighter of their group had lost to the androids. Broly knew that they were about to leave, but he didn't have any of it. He was here to play with them. His group quickly descended to the ground and appeared in front of number 18. The androids were surprised at the sudden appearance. Number 17 was frowning as he looked at Broly's imposing figure. Broly only provokingly smiled at them. And who are you? Big guy. Number 18 asked as she observed the one in front of her. Number 16 was going through his database and informed them about Broly as he found an entry from when he first met the Z Fighters. Since the bugs Dr. Jero used to gather DNA and data from exceptional fighters were automated, Dr. Jero himself didn't know about Broly but Number 16 of course had access to that database. He knew from the taken footage of Broly's little bout with the others that Broly and his followers were exceptional strong. Number 16 reminded the other androids to be careful. Number 17 and number 18 were shocked by the revelation. But after the initial surprise their expression returned to a haughty one. So, what if he is stronger than them, didn't we just beat them up too? Number 17 spoke and without any warning, charged out. Number 17 punched out. Broly evaded the attack and thrusted his arm directly at number 17's throat. Just as his fingertips were about to touch his throat, they stopped. With only a centimeter left, Broly's fingertips stopped. Number 17 looked at the hand and immediately jumped back. He touched his throat, seemingly to feel if he was hurt. Cold sweat covered his back as he thought about the fact that he was almost fatally injured in a single exchange. He instantly knew that Broly was a league above the Z Fighters and that he had to take him seriously. Number 17 didn't back down, instead rushed back to Broly. He released dozens of attacks in a second, but no matter how much effort and strength he put behind his attacks, he couldn't connect. He gritted his teeth as he saw how calmly blocked and evaded his attacks. 
Broly obviously didn't take him seriously. Number 18 was shocked to see how her brother wasn't able to gain advantage. Without saying anything, she rushed in to help. Number 17 first wanted to stop her, but he knew that there was no way for him alone to beat Broly. Number 18 joined her brother and relentlessly threw out attacks after the other. Chops, kicks, sweeps, elbow attacks, no matter what attack or in which position Broly was in, he blocked or evaded them all. Although it looked like he was being pushed back, Broly could easily stomp them into the ground if he wanted. They wouldn't even be a match for the now unconscious Goku. How would they even hope to beat him? Even together, they would be far from a match against him. Broly leaned sideways, evading a punch from number 17. With a kick upwards, he sent number 17 flying. Number 18 was trying to kick his head while he was busy with number 17, but suddenly his speed increased as he ducked under her leg. Broly reached out and grabbed her leg. He spun around once and threw her at her brother, who was finally able to stop. He was still dazed from Broly's attack and was unable to dodge his sister. She crashed into him and they both fell from the sky. They heavily landed on the ground. Broly didn't follow up and instead waited for them to recover. They slowly stood up and watched Broly vigilantly. Number 17 suddenly shouted at number 16 who was observing them. What are you doing? Help us. Number 17 was ranting while number 16 was still looking at Broly, who had crossed his arms and smiled. My only objection is to kill Goku. If you interfere with my mission, I will annihilate you. Number 16 spoke without emotions. Broly almost burst out laughing. Oi! Threatening me? That's some confident words. Can you back them up? Broly's smile slowly disappeared as he was speaking. Without speaking anything further, he disappeared and directly re-emerged in front of number 16. Broly punched out. Number 16 quickly covered his head as he crossed his arms in front of him. But instead of a punch, number 16 registered both his wrist being grabbed. His block was forced open, revealing Broly's fierce glance. In the next moment, a knee came flying right in his face. He was unable to react this quickly. His head swung backwards as he took the attack head on. With another kick, Broly sent number 16 flying. Number 16 heavy body bounced several times on the ground before stopping. He laid on the ground, not moving for some time. He slowly got back up and saw how number 17 and number 18 were knocked unconscious by a simple chop to their neck. Number 16 looked at Broly who waved at him slightly before he and his followers disappeared into the sky. Number 16 didn't follow him, as he knew from that simple exchange that he would be easily disposed of by Broly. He knew that Broly was hiding strength based on the exchange with number 18 and number 17, but this was beyond what he calculated. Number 16 walked up to the two unconscious androids and picked them up before disappearing as well. He had a mission to accomplish, and these two would still prove useful in future exchanges. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.